in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Self time in the name of Jesus. Every force of darkness sitting on my glory stopping it from manifesting I curse you in the name of Jesus lift your voice and prophesy I command my lights to shine I command my lights to shine the Bible says arise shine for your light is come I decree and declare it's my season of triumph Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. One more time in the name of Jesus. Every force stopping my helpers from reaching me through bad reports, through divination, through misguided reports. I command in the name of Jesus that the Lord is against you. Release my helpers to my destiny. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray. Whether you understand what you are praying or not, pray. Open your mouth and pray. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time, the set time, set time, the set time. Hallelujah. I like you to pray this one with all your heart. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit. Every spirit that makes men trivialize my giftings. That make men trivialize the anointing on my life. That makes men trivialize what God is doing to me. I come against you right now. In the name of Jesus. It's my season of celebration. Lift your voice and prophesy. The spirit that causes men to trivialize what you represent. To trivialize what God is doing in your life. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus, everything that should be in my life now and was hijacked by the enemy, I place a demand in the
the name of Jesus, locate my destiny now. Lift your voice and pray. Pray, pray, lift your voice and pray. Like the bones in the valley of Ezekiel, I command let bones be joined to bones. Opportunity joined to opportunity. Favor joined to favor. Say after me in the name of Jesus Every force of darkness Programmed to kill my prayer life Programmed to kill my passion for God Programmed to kill my appetite for the world I come against you right now Lift your voice and redeem your prayer life Lift your voice and redeem your, your world life Hallelujah. Everyone who pray this, but the brothers, I want you to pray this. Praise the Lord. Brothers, when we raise this prayer and I see any brother looking at me and you are not praying, I walk up to you and hold your hand. It's a serious prayer. Say in the name of Jesus, the grace for speedy establishment. Lord, release it upon my life. Lift your voice and pray. The grace that causes men to be established on time. There is a cause of darkness that causes men to be established late. At 40, you are still in your father's house. At 40, you are still living from hand to mouth. It's a cause. Please pray. Please help us on the Establish me. Send me help from Zion. Establish me on time, on time, on time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone pray this. But I want our sisters to pray this with all your heart. Say in the name of Jesus. Jesus. The spirit of unnecessary lateness. The spirit of unnecessary lateness. in life. Financial lateness. I curse you in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. It should happen on time. It should happen on time. There is a time allocated. Every time is not convenient. There is a time allocated. name of Jesus in the name of Jesus father, father I know it is within your power to turn, power to turn my life around I ask you in the name of Jesus turn my life around lift your voice and pray change my story my life around pray 
said honestly I've been a prophet so prophesying is not something that is new but this for this case I don't know and then he said prophesy he didn't say discuss he didn't say cry in one minute I'm not going to tell you what to say but I want you to stand and look at your destiny I want you to prophesy carry the word of God like a drug put it on your destiny my destiny I speak to you you are alive hear the word of the Lord I command you to rise I command you to grow I program favor in you pray I program breakthrough in you I speak to my destiny. You are a manifestation of the word of God. You are a manifestation of the faith of God. You are the manifestation of the goodness of God. I take away pain from my destiny. I take away regrets from my destiny. I take away sorrow from my destiny. I prophesy goodness. I prophesy joy unspeakable, full of glory. you have prayed I decree over your life the Lord has declared that this is the year of triumph we're angry and we're insisting that it must happen therefore I decree and I declare that if there's anyone under the sound of my voice under any kind of siege that will not let you see the faithfulness of God I decree and I declare right now that power leaves your life right now that force lives your life right now. Hallelujah. We're about to listen to the word. While your hands are lifted, I want to do an impartation of understanding. Listen. Most people think they know, they understand scripture. It's not true. I decree and I declare, I stretch my hands towards you. May the spirit of understanding, capacity to comprehend the systems of the kingdom, I release it upon you right now. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus. I open your understanding. 
I open your understanding. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. I open your understanding. I command your mind to be receptive. I decree that your spirit will be the signal in the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down if you can. God bless you. Good evening. Brothers and sisters, the weeks that are coming will really mean business. You know, I've been saying this. I know it in my spirit when a reality has been declared to manifest from the realm of the heavens. But you know that it is not yet your experience. There is no believer who sits down knowing what God has ordained for your life. And watching the enemy play games with your life and you sit down and hope things will change no sir you have to engage with understanding engage with understanding until that which is yours comes to you the Bible says right from the days of John the Baptist and until now it says the kingdom suffered violent and the violent the violent spiritually violent those who will insist and say I'm not taking anything less than this promise of God's word they are the ones who take it by force I am passionate about results I never never associate with anything that does not have capacity to produce results I am a result driven person this is a result driven ministry the fierceness of life does not allow for stories and grammar people want real results in their lives and let me tell you this if you're a man of God here listen to me no matter what you claim to be doing if it does not translate into genuine results you are wasting people's time it's as simple as that herein is our father glorified 15 verse 8 John hearing this is how God takes glory from men when ye bear much fruit when your results are notable beyond argument notable beyond sentiment he said by so doing you will prove that you are my disciples you will prove that you have sat down under my mentorship and tutelage your results validate the efficacy of the teaching ministry of the Holy Spirit when our lives are barren of certain dimensions of results it's an indictment on the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit results that defy background results that defy the expectations of naysayers and men and women who look forward to your failure as their self-fulfilling prophecy but you must contend for it hallelujah i've been thinking you know i've been thinking about you all through the week my mind has just been lord there are dimensions that we must enter before the end of this year the word of god will not go void when god speaks it is within his power to make it happen are we together but it is always been a partnership it's always been that way that the heavens must partner with the earth for realities to be established here and so my assignment is to scan through and make sure that we tie every loose end that can force or that can can sabotage this prophecy from finding expression my job is to search and find out and to remind us and indoctrinate us with the truths that are capable of bringing results results that are predictable results that are consistent results that have nothing to do with the wishes of men hearing is our father glorified hearing 
if you have ever wondered how God takes glory from men this is how it happens when you bear much fruit much fruit much fruit not little fruit much fruit when results become um, become notable notable and consistent it will compel any force of darkness regardless of sentiment to know that the hand of God is upon your life hallelujah every dimension in the spirit has a price every level every dimension of greatness has a price and by the grace of god he has granted us this privilege as a ministry to laboriously open god's people to the demands the price requirement the cost dimension of certain results that we need i am passionate about connecting people's desires to the formula and the principles that have been designed for those outcomes to manifest it is one thing if you can tell me what you want if you can tell me what you desire i can show you the mystery that is allocated for that result there is a price i wish everything were would just happen without your cooperation but that's not the way the system of god works there is a price the price we are talking about is the price of alignment the price of partnership because you see the operation of the system of the kingdom as we have learned is such that it comes by grace but it says through faith they are not the same thing by grace made available through faith the summation of your partnership that causes that reality that is available grace makes it available it creates the possibility but your engaging the word accordingly makes it your experience grace does not make it your experience grace opens it up it lets you know that this is a possibility contained in god i've shared it with you that the grace of god is not redemption no redemption is a subset of god's grace god's grace is a generic description of any and everything that only god can provide it's called his grace So the anointing is God's grace. His mercy is a dimension of his grace. His love is a dimension of his grace. Any possibility that should be the experience of men that can only be provided for by God is his grace. Grace never makes it your experience. It creates the potential for redemption, for healing, for blessing, for increase for multiplication but then it takes faith and most people have thought that the only aspect of faith is to believe and confess no sir mm -mm. Mm -mm. no that's only an aspect of faith faith is a generic name given to everything that involves the partnership of man the first key to partnership is finding out the formula god has provided for receiving that miracle understanding it by the help of the spirit and then taking relevant steps in accordance to what he has said this is what the bible calls faith believing is only an aspect of faith confessing is only an aspect of faith that's not all there is to it if you stop there you will be in total shock you can believe that prosperity is your heritage you can confess it is your heritage and stop and don't engage the other forces and you will remain in poverty and penury forever you can believe is god's desire for you to be great listen carefully you can confess that it is god's desire for you to be great and not engage the other forces of greatness value relationships skill and find out you never rise are we together now yes 
So when we learn the systems of the kingdom, we are bringing ourselves to the point of faith where we are able to act with understanding and intelligence. It is only when our obedience is complete that we commit God's integrity and then he is compelled to make it happen. This is how angels work. Angels don't work at random. Angels signify things. Revelations 1 verse 1, the Bible says the revelation of Jesus Christ, which he gave unto his servant John. He said, and he sent it and signified it by his angel. Angels act in accordance to understanding. Their action accredits that you are doing something right. So they don't just act at random just because they are there. No. There is what to do that engages them because they are governed, they are supervised by the Holy Spirit. It is the office of the Holy Spirit that supervises the operation of angels. They don't just move anyhow and do everything. That your eyes are open in the realm of the Spirit and you see them near you is no guarantee they will rescue you. Hallelujah. Is God speaking to us? And so we must find out the things that we need to understand to help us excel. Brothers and sisters, God sees my heart and how much passion that I have to see every one of us rise. I will share with us a few things most of them recaps so that we re-evaluate whether we have been practicing these things and then we'll pray are you ready hmm. the first price for doing business with god and making any name and anything that is sustainable on earth please write it down if there is a title for this thing i will call it the price wherever we stop i'm i'm re we are going back to the laws the systems of the kingdom there is no other way to get results than a comprehension a working knowledge and understanding of the systems of the kingdom alongside how we are to engage them this is how results are produced the first price is the price of intimacy the price of intimacy The price of intimacy make a mark in the sand of time God's way if you are unwilling to pay the price to know God the price of intimacy is not the price of praying in tongues it's not just the price of fasting is the price to know God the price to know God the price to know God write it down the price of intimacy is the requirement that causes a man to have a relationship with God. Daniel 11 verse 32. Thank you Jesus. He says, but the people that do know, know, the word know there, you've heard me say it again and again. It's not just the word aware. That you are aware God exists does not mean you know him. Are we together now? Pastor Alpha knows me. Pastor Femi knows me. Correct? Promise knows me. Kenny, they know me. But I'm not sure any of them know me as much as a Jimmy. Why? Because we have spent more time. There are many things that have brought us closer. And every one of them can only enjoy. Their confidence about me is based on their knowledge. Please listen. The foundation for your confidence in the kingdom is not just bold face for nothing. It is the knowledge of God. The Bible says, it says, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. 
Let not, um, how did he put it now? Let not, let not the strong man glory in his strength. But he says, let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. The foundation, as I'm saying it now, please, I want you to check your life. There are many hustlers in life. They like money, but they hate God. They like what God can give, but they hate him. They like church. They love miracles. They love anointing. They love signs and wonders, but they hate God. They like seed sowing and harvest, but they hate God. Please come, Pastor Alpha. Let me tell you something. I can come to your house and like your bed. Your bed is not you. Correct? I can like your kitchen. I can like your food. I can like your suit. I can like your tie. Huh? I can like your children. I can like your car. All those things are related to you, but they are not you. Anointing is not God. Miracles is not God. Hear me, oh. Breakthrough is not God. Fasting is not God. Prayer is not God. Bible study is not God. God is a person who can be known. You can hang around activities that are related to him and convince yourself that because you have actively participated in activities that relate to God, it means you know him. This is the pride of African men. We claim I was born in so, so, so time. This baptistry, we were the ones who dedicated it. The first communicants, we are the ones who laid hands on them. When Reinhard Bonke came, we were the ones who set the canopy. And we add all those spiritual accolades to equal knowing God. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Knowing the things of God and knowing God are two different things. The Bible never said, but the people who come to church. It never said, but the people who drop their tithes and offering. He never said the people who are ordained into ministry. Please listen carefully. We are examining the foundation for our results. You learn principles without an encounter with God. You are just learning jargons. As powerful as principles are. Principles are a derivative of a relationship with a person. Are we together now? Yes. You can know about me by reading my books, but you know me by meeting me. My book is supposed to create an appetite for encounter. Here's what the Bible says. It says, ye search the scriptures. You search the scriptures because you think in them by themselves you will find life. He said, those scriptures testify of me. That means reading the Bible should stimulate you to want to meet a person. Much more than opening the Bible. Zodiac books can be opened and you can read. Scientology and all kinds of books can be opened. But if you're reading the book does not translate to meeting a person, you will never be great in life. But the people that do know their God, show me a man who is willing to go through the price of intimacy. I don't care whether he went to school or not. I don't care whether he came from what background. Show me a man. He may be an orphan. Oh, goodness. What relationship with the Holy Spirit can bring to a man? Brothers and sisters, he can pick a weak person. A weak person. A weak lady. No father, no mother. No opportunity for a great life. But that you are stupid enough to say, Spirit of the living God, you represent the presence of Jesus. I am willing. I am willing like a little child will run to the father i'm clueless about my life and destiny i don't know where i'm coming from i don't know where i'm going to i don't have an idea of what life is about but all i want is you i want to know you i want to see your face i want to know you Lord. I want to touch you. I want to hear your voice. 
I want to know is listen life will challenge your knowledge of God you can know God as a theory one day the reason why many believers give up just like some of you now let me tell you the mystery of tiredness and living God is because there was no encounter in the first place let's be careful the kind of believers who are producing in church I know when I talk like this people think I'm just being sarcastic no I love the body of Christ but we need to re-examine the quality of the harvest we are bringing because we are bringing believers who don't know God they don't care about God they have zero passion for the things of God they will tell you I'm not called into ministry God has called me into business in other words keep all that one to the business people whoever told you knowing God was for pastors whoever told you knowing God was for men of God and their wives and their children but the people that do know their God you want a harvest of strength you want a life of exploits and triumph the first prize is to know God I can pray for you but I can't know God for you you can benefit from my relationship but brothers and sisters, everybody will stand before that Red Sea. Whether you are married, when you get to the Red Sea, pastor, you will stand there and your wife will stand before her Red Sea. It is her faith that will bring her victory. You can't intercede for people indefinitely forever. No, sir. Are we together? But the people who do know their God, I talk to pastors and they tell me, Apostle, how do you manage criticism? How you, do you manage this? You know, people who like me don't, no longer like me. And I look at them and say, oh dear. You are all, just like a patient comes to tell the doctor and says, look, I've been purging. I've been coughing. And while he's talking, the doctor is seeing symptoms of cholera. Are you seeing that now? That's the same way. Do you know most of our lamentations are a window into something that is wrong? Most likely, we don't know God. Most likely. That's why you can say, Father, I, I thank you. I know you will bless me. But Lord, if you don't bless me, anything I do, oh, that's your cup of tea. That kind of talk is a revelation that there is no encounter. Because when you know God, he infects you like a virus. You come to a point where you say, Lord, seeking you for results is over forever. I seek you first for who you are results or no results i'm stuck with you i'm stuck with you it's a salt covenant i'm stuck with you forever are we together everybody say the price of intimacy say it say the price of intimacy can you boldly stand please i want you to listen to my message knowing god experientially it's a powerful message knowing god experientially teaches you the system of knowing god let me tell you how god causes men to know him he introduces himself to people and his dimensions in the presence of their challenges and predicaments only challenges can help men know god there's no other way to know him the names of god scattered in the bible were a revelation of him in the presence of certain challenges most people know God as healer just because they saw Benny him praying or they came for miracle service. But the day you stand face to face with a doctor's report that says, look, madam, um, I'm sorry to tell you this, but it's not like you may not give birth. You cannot give birth. We have done the scan and we realize that you don't even have a womb. He says, sorry, come again. He say, look, I'm a consultant, so you are not talking to a stupid person. There is no womb. At that point, you go back and say, God, is this not your word? Let me tell you what it will do to you. Challenges shake us up all of a sudden and make God serious. You know that there is a way you can be trivializing God, but then certain challenges just shake you. Ordinarily, you will not wake up by 2 a.m. in the night, but the reality of what has confronted you forces you to wake up. You don't need alarm clock, you don't need Lipton, you don't need coffee. The pressure. 
and all of a sudden you pray let me tell you something after nine months when you hold that child you are not holding a child you are holding a testimony other people are dancing over a child you are dancing over a testimony so the day they prophesy and say may the god that can open up a door in one year open your door other people are saying amen the moment let me tell you how you receive things in the spirit yes you receive by faith but your past experiences with god help you to receive the newer things he's bringing god looks for something he has done in your life before and connects it to what you are trusting him for are we together when david was fighting goliath remember he drew from the archives of god's faithfulness do you have a name you have given god based on something only you and him know or are you just reciting the names that you read in the bible rafa Jire, pastor there is a name you call your wife it's none of my business it's none of our business that is a product of intimacy there is a name you call somebody when you are angry there is a name you call somebody when the times are good there is a even as friends is that true what is the name of god that is a product of your knowing him what name did you give him is there a secret name that every time you call god says i know this voice uh -uh. no one else calls me this name when pastor alpha's wife hears him calling that name he can't mistake it she can't mistake it for me even if i know the name it won't sound like that there is a mystery behind the name there is a way when people in the bible said rafa there were too many stories that came to their mind but today you say rafa and your mind is blank no experience to connect to rafa oh jehovah jireh as abraham abraham knows jehovah jireh but we sing it jehovah jireh my provider and we jump around and there is no revelation that connects that that's why africa has resorted to calling him names in their languages because they found out that it, it has it can help when that gentleman was calling whatever he was saying i was happy because he was not just reciting a poem a name that relates to your pain you don't survive an accident and call god jire you call him the deliverer the deliverer so when somebody sees you say how oh, the deliverer is here they say ah, in a prosperity convention say mr man is the dimension of god that was revealed to me that i keep calling what is the name what is the name we've had our fathers call god names that were strange to us we copied it but it's time for us to have a genuine encounter genuine encounter the price of intimacy koinonia please listen to me no level of business acumen no level of education can cover the gap that intimacy was meant to cover but the people that do know their god if you're a pastor please don't do ministry without knowing god you will die like a chicken you will sit down one day on the stage and start crying and the people ask you what is going you say i, I don't know The price of intimacy there are certain things about intimacy i want us to understand number one please i'm taking out time to just i want us to understand this thing intimacy takes time you cannot know a man a woman you are willing to spend time with no sir intimacy is a product of time you don't give God five minutes and get Benny Hinn's encounter. Please. God is not that cheap, my brother, my sister. Listen to me. You need to spend time. He must mean a lot to you. Number two, God must become priority to have intimacy with him. The Bible says don't cast your pearl before swine. I've said it. You don't come to someone's house and then he takes you to his bedroom shows you where he keeps money no sir 
when you come sometimes you will even stand at the gate sometimes you will enter and stay inside sometimes you will stay at the parlor you will not even have access to the kitchen but there are certain people while all that is happening the child can run and even enter the bedroom the price for intimacy i look at the lives of people believers yes we are born again yes we are filled with the holy spirit but when i look at our lives i don't see priority passion for god is contagious when a brother likes a lady no matter how he tries to hide it his roommate will know is that true the roommate will say you just spoke to five people but this sixth person the joy at which you used to call that lady this joy is not natural correct you are hugging everybody after service and then the way you hug that lady brother said this hug is too generous for just brotherly kindness no what is there's more to this and say it's true i've been looking at her passion passion has a presence don't lie to us that you love god when we cannot see the passion passion has a presence i hunger and thirst for you in a dry and weary land all I want is you. I hunger and thirst for you. I hunger and thirst for you. In a dry and weary land. For all I want is you. The third key I'm sharing with you for intimacy to be established one is you must be ready to invest your time you give god five minutes of your time you get five minutes worth of knowledge second is priority third is your willingness to lay down ha. The, the bible calls it the power to lay down this is where some of you will not like me now this is where many believers will not like me now because our generation has been indoctrinated that you can eat your cake and have it no sir go and ask anybody even an occultist you don't eat your cake and have it you cannot know god without a sacrifice i'm not talking money a sacrifice fasting is a sacrifice prayer is a sacrifice are we together studying the bible is a sacrifice we don't like this language at all yet we want power we want results sacrifice there are times that on account of your intimacy with god you just want to eat and the word of the lord comes to you go on a three-day fast oh god which breakthrough is coming now god said this is not the issue of breakthrough you are about i'm about to reveal i'm about to open you up to certain encounters and i said god this is not flamboyant enough if that you told me that i after this three days fast land will manifest from anywhere and come it's a worthy investment to fast but wh why will i fast to know you what is the big deal about you when i'm looking for land and god will say you see it you see your heart Pastor Alpha, hold my hands again. Everybody says sacrifice. I am amazed at the difficulty that believers go through to lay down the slightest thing. Slightest thing. So this suit, you discuss with God for one year before it leaves. You are carnal and you don't love him. It's the truth. Empty your account. I curse that, that devil. You argue for two years first and finish the money till 10,000. I say, God, I will lay it down. God says, just leave. I will tell you when to do it again. Are you willing to lay down? Jesus said, I have the power to lay down. Let me show you maturity in the spirit. When a man has gotten to a point where there is nothing you cannot lay down. Abraham, take now thy son, thy only son whom thou lovest many of us will agree to fast for 400 days than to lay down something for him 
Everybody say sacrifice. 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 When God makes that demand and you are willing to sacrifice, you will know him. Let me tell you, I submit to you with all humility. This man standing before you is a testimony of sacrifice. Ask God, there is nothing I cannot lay down for him. Oh, it's a joke. Before he finishes talking, it will go. I have exercised myself to see the vanity of anything outside of God. You must lay down. The Bible says, love not the world. Usually, it's those who hate money that preach that message. No. It's all those who are poor and broke. They preach it as a consolation to their poverty. No, sir. You should not preach that message until you are really rich. Love not the world or the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, he did say don't have those things. An affinity to it. God gave you a car and the car took his place. God gave you a wife and the wife took his place. God gave you children. They took his place. God gave you a, a job paying six figures and he lost you in that job. Is God speaking to someone here? God increased your CGPA and that's the end of it. God connected you to a good brother, a good sister. God gave you a business idea and with that idea, he lost you. No, sir. No, sir. Sacrifice. The Lord, for as long as I live, in life and in death, you remain my priority. And that if need be, I will lay aside anything. If God tells me, lay aside koinonia now, brothers and sisters, is with tears we we'll hold the last valedictory service. I will hold the last service. I don't care what prophet comes from where and says, Apostle, I think you are not hearing God well. I will apologize when God changes his mind, but for now, koinonia closed. Apostle, what do you do with the life you are blessing? I don't know. Ask the one who sent me. But Koinonia closed. There is a way you can do ministry. You have carried your reputation and your life and added to it. When God says shift left, God says, and then leave me where? Are we together? I want you to look at your life now. Let me show you why money is not coming to your life. Leave, leave business. We are coming there, but we are examining why there are some of us, regardless of our prayer, Satan enters our life anyhow. Do you know why? Because the lust in your heart needs to be purged beyond imagination. Your attachment to things, you God would dare not make a demand of anything. What sort of thing is that? Who gave you the life? Many of you would have noticed that from August. August till now, I'm not sure I've gone from over four ministrations. Cancelled almost everything. It's just been maybe one or two ministrations per month and the rest. Very unusual because that's the instruction God gave. And I said, that's it. Let me tell you, there are certain people that I would have wanted to be in their meetings with all my heart. But I love God. There's nothing I know that moves the heart of God than him seeing something you ordinarily love, but you say, Lord, it is for you. He says, that's it. This is what I'm looking for. If this handkerchief is five naira, and I tell you, I brought this handkerchief from the UK. Are we together? I bought it, whatever amount, one pound, and I carried it from the UK and I brought they wanted to collect it but I hid it back immigration wanted to harass me but I said this is for you if I give you will you give somebody for 1000 it's not about the sacrifice have increased the value of it there is no rising in the spirit when you are holding on to everything jealousy anger Huh? all kinds of things please let's re-examine these things if we really want results God declared that it's a year of triumph but it's your heart with him it's your heart with him apostle all I want is just pray for me let a husband come keep quiet oh sister and listen to what I'm telling you because it's not just the issue of pray for husband God has already seen the wickedness in your heart and God is saying no way 
you must love me first before I carry my son that I've labored on to carry and give you. Oh God, just bless me. I need to be a millionaire. I've seen this thing in my dream and God said, if you don't listen to my servant, you will, it will remain in the dream there. It takes hunger for God. How many people have made money and left God? Have you seen people like that? Anybody that says money does not give you an option is a poor and a broke person who doesn't know anything about money. Because when you have money, there are few things you will pray about. Correct? Many prayer requests are tied to finances. And let me be honest with you, there is a level in your life that you get to where you don't think about money again. You may not have everything, but you get to a point where all your basic needs can be met to the degree you want them to be met. At that point, that's how you see how carnal and mundane your heart is. Because there's nothing else. I understand praying for six hours because of the emergency that is on you. But when His Majesty has lifted your life beyond certain realms, that's when you will know and prove whether He's really Lord in your life. My number one prayer to God every time is, Oh God, for as long as I live, may nothing win my heart so much enough to be able to push you and say, God, wait behind. Just because a door of ministry was open, Wait behind, oh God, Benny Hinn is calling me. Wait behind, Billy Graham gave me the privilege to see him before he dies. Wait behind, Bill Gates just called me and he said he wants to bless a man of God on earth. And favor located me. No, sir. No, sir. Lord, make me your priority. Make me your priority make me your priority this was the secret of david make me your priority priority means you mean the world to me you mean the world to me brothers and sisters get my passion for god i pray that god will, will whatever it is that god did to me i pray that it will happen to you because if truly speaking you want to do business with god you must love him beyond things things beyond things I love him with all my heart I love him my heart is open before him is the God of my salvation I love him with all my heart I will lay down anything for him anything anything I really mean it I really mean it don't think I'm just talking I fear God I will lay down anything reputation nonsense If you can lay down anything in his presence and go down on your knees and say, Lord, this is for you. I lay down my pride. I lay down my achievement. Oh, I have a PhD in so, 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 and so. Just calm down first. Too. Lord, I hand it over to you. There's nothing God loves like surrender. 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 It's yours. That's a language that is music to his ears. The anointing Lord you gave me is yours. The grace you gave me is yours. And while people are clapping for you in the open, Apostle Joshua Selman, you come before him and say, Lord, without you I can go nowhere. Say, Abba, Apostle, tell the truth. As anointed as you are, without you. Hmm. The wife of David looked at him and said, you are dancing, you are, you are you are misrepresenting yourself. You don't know you are a king before God. And David said, me? You don't know my track record with this God. I've told God, one day to me leaving you, please, if it means me taking my life, let it be that I didn't finish my assignment, but that you remain my priority. I surrender all. Everything I give to you, I'm withholding nothing. Listen to the song before you sing it. Lord, I surrender to you. Everything. I give to you. 
I'm withholding nothing. Withholding Listen, nothing. the key to dying, killing your reputation, and the, the key to entering your rest is to hand over your life to God. I don't have any reputation, no brothers and sisters. My reputation is God. You know, there are times that sometimes I chat with the media people and they tell me, you know, someone, all these people that write all kinds of things, sometimes they send mails, sometimes sarcasm, people say all kinds of things. I say, Apostle, your reputation, and I laugh. I say, ah, reputation died since when? If I had a reputation of my own, wouldn't I be under pressure right now? Let me tell you what is causing stress. The fight to protect our reputation. That's it. So that people will not think I'm poor. Let me prove a point. And God is saying, what point? Come on to me. Come on to me. I need people to know that me, I'm, not, I'm not just a, I'm not, I'm not a poor man. I, I need to go and buy a trouser. And God says, no, I am your reputation. I am your inheritance. Listen, let me teach you people the secret of rest. There are many pastors wearing themselves out. I need crowd so that they will know that me too am anointed. If, if a man can receive nothing except it is given to him from God. I learned to rest in him. He truly is my rest. <laughs> it's my rest. That's why the ministry has been designed in such a way that whether I'm here or not, God will be glorified. It can't be around me. No, sir. If I die now, God forbid, ah yes, you will just cry for seven days. You will try to pray and raise me back to life maybe two or three days. After three days, I guarantee you'll be tired small. And you just say, Tom, what do we do? They say, let's just give God praise. Somebody will have a dream and see me saying, please bury me, Jerry, and leave me in peace. Ah, but he said you will not die. While you are talking all that nonsense, I'm in heaven happy and rejoicing and looking at you and saying instead of crying for me you better go and listen to my messages and make a meaning out of your life for for me to live is christ but to die is gain look at the stress that is killing you is it not because of ego talk to me 90 percent of the depression that is killing us in this life is an attempt to protect our image we say and i need to guard my image what nonsense image ask a man who built an image that god smashed into pieces he built 90 feet of his image protected by bowing down god says no but those who entered the fire to protect the image of god god says i come to protect you brothers and sisters i give you an advice Carry your reputation like a sacrifice. Hand it over to God and enter your rest this night. This is a deliverance for someone now. Is that true? Yes. The 40,000 house rent is killing you. You don't have the money. But to go and meet your friend and squat. You are saying, no, I need them to know. Please, enter your rest. Pack out of that place and go and give yourself peace. Instead of dying. To maintain your reputation they've been seeing me wearing only one shoe i need to get another one nobody has been seeing you people have their problems it is your it is your your the punishment that comes from not handing over everything to god i'd like you to pray as you are seated and say lord i am tired of carrying a load you told me to give you i hand it over Apostle, but people are always asking me, when will I marry? It will kill you. Don't let depression kill you. Hand everything over to God and enter your Sabbath. Enter your rest. A man can receive nothing until it is given to him from God. Pray, Lord, make me your priority. I'm willing to commit time to knowing you. I'm willing to commit to surrender everything and make you a priority. This obsession I have for marriage, this obsession for children, this obsession for job, this obsession for power, this obsession for ministry and rema and miracles is taking your place. Return back to your throne, oh God.
if this is all I share tonight is worth it where would I be if you left me now where would I be if you left me now where would I be that's my testimony if you left you Where would I be if he left me? This song means a lot to me because you see, brothers and sisters, he is the invisible force behind men who command results. You don't see him, you only see them. So chances are that they are the ones who you can shake. They are the ones who you can sow to. But every great man knows that behind him is an invisible and mighty God. Unmovable. I may shake, but he's unmovable, unshakable. But the people that do know their God shall defy status quo. They shall be strong and they shall do exploits. The first prize while revisiting the mysteries that make for greatness. Brothers and sisters, let's return to the place of intimacy. Let's return to the place of intimacy. This is a call. Return to the place of intimacy. Spend time with God. Draw strength from Him. Talk to Him. Don't hide anything from Him. Open your all to Him. It will be foolish and silly to hide anything from Him. Everything. Carry your pain. Carry your tears. Learn to spend time with God alone. Hold on, please. There are some of you, as I look at you, you don't yet have the passion for God to go on a personal retreat. No. You are churchy, you love God, you don't drink, you don't steal, you don't womanize, you don't follow men, but you don't love God. You can't go by yourself and lock your house and say, please, I need to spend time. Some of you, the last time you did this was a long time ago. Ministry had it its place in your life. Listen, you must learn the power of retreating. Even if it's just for a day, do it. Lock yourself. Lord, I come before you. You are the God of my strength. I am open and naked before you. These are my crowns. These are my pains. I bring them before you. And you fellowship with him and he talks to you ah my son i love you correct this add this to your life i'm introducing this begin to see things this way and you come out of there with fire and grace and people look at you and your life is an unending compendium of wonder wonder unfolding when a man gasses out it's a sign that he has left the secret place in a long time freshness is one of the characteristics of the secret place look at me whether you are working class or you are a student you are a father you are a mother you are a husband or a wife i'd like you to write it if you are writing i must create time alone underline alone with god mog create time more with god because all you have to serve the people is what you receive in the secret. Thank you, Jesus. That's how it works. You want to experience a, a life of unending victory. It starts that way. It starts that way. It always starts with Him, not principles. We are coming to principles, but Him. Not just an encounter. An encounter can be a one-time experience. But intimacy is fellowship. Is partnership. Staying. Remaining with him. Where he becomes your priority. Sister, a brother comes into your life and meets you madly in love with God. 
he won't do any how to you like that because he met when he meets you idol uh, idol carelessly moving around waiting for a man that's when he does everything for you he comes to find you in worship can we see by this time oh i would love to but i, I need to spend some time with god ah, which god so well that's that's what i do ah, by yourself you are behaving as if you're a child and you, you just see that as a sign from god that this is going to be a wicked husband you don't need to go and ask god again whether he's the will of god god answered you there your passion forced an answer from him are we together i love god i love jesus i love him i like you to pray and say lord help me love you help me love you genuinely the price of intimacy the price of intimacy the price of intimacy let no westernization preach you out of this my brother my sister the price of intimacy let education not preach you out of this let a job let money let marriage let children not preach you out of this way before ministry was he was and he is and will ever be in the beginning God in the beginning God in the beginning God I must become alpha and no man of your life for anything in between to make sense please pray Oh, I re I reestablish my covenant of intimacy. For Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Yes, you are the cup that will run dry. Other things may run dry. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Not in my life. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Hold on. It's impossible to marry a bad woman when your heart is connected to God. You attract what looks like you. You leave God and you are doing all kinds of rubbish. The devil will bring Jezebel to your life that will tear your head and tear your anointing into pieces it's impossible to marry a bad man all these men that drive you to church they leave you somewhere sisters i'm talking to you they all go and do koinonia pray for us oh mother Teresa. as soon as they are rounding up they are there by that place where they are selling something they are waiting for you they pick you and say i love you nonsense let me deliver you now if there are such kind of people in your life you better send them a text and tell them get out of my life so that god himself will bring my husband or my wife hallelujah anybody that hates your god and likes you is a liar no sir you come under my roof you serve what i'm serving you serve who i'm serving you can't be under my roof and have your own rules no sir it is from your intimacy you will raise your children you can't give what you don't have it is from your intimacy as a pastor let me tell you when you love god and you hunger after him that fire con the people catch that fire and they love god too you tell people to fast you are eating secretly you buy fish you buy yam you buy whatever people are laboring and they are fasting you will eat and belt and dress and come and round up the meeting intimacy intimacy i'd like you to think in one minute what is that one thing that is currently fighting the position of god in my life think don't pray think what is it what is that one thing that if god makes a demand now honestly i can't give it what is it some of us is our reputation i keep talking about this reputation my class 
I am this, I am that. The power of my hand. Hey. I have seen mighty people fall like a leaf overnight because God they ignored God's assistance in their life. You can be a CEO of XYZ today and be a billionaire and crash back to zero. Is God waking somebody up today? Please return to the secret place. Return to the place where he is priority. Return to the age long and age old mystery of retreats. Where you take periodic times out with God. And just spend and cry before him. And say Lord thank you. That you fast for 100 days does not mean you love God. It can just mean that you are a strong person. Congratulations for that. But it's not equal to intimacy. You're all I want. You're all I've ever needed. You're all. to hold the hand of your neighbor and pray for him and say lord keep your love burning in him keep your love burning in her don't pray for yourself pray for your neighbor lord keep your love burning that's the investment of prayer i'm making for my neighbor whether you're a newcomer or not lord keep your let my neighbor prioritize you my neighbor loves you but you are not such a big deal to him or to her but lord walk on his heart tonight walk on her heart tonight hallelujah hallelujah are you blessed are you blessed these are the mysteries let me teach you one more hmm. the second prize that i want to teach you tonight wherever we stop we'll pray we'll continue next week i'm taking this thing because i really want us to understand the second prize is the price of submission to authority listen the price of submission to authority write it down hmm. the price the embarrassing ego stinging but destiny molding price of submission to authority the mysteries that turn people's lives into wonders the price of submission to authority hmm. nobody promotes himself in this kingdom you cannot promote yourself you cannot accredit yourself nobody makes himself a professor nobody makes himself a doctor is that true pastor alpha you have supervisors correct mm -hmm. no student marks his project and say i passed correct no in the kingdom listen the system of rising is such that it's not only god that approves you alone men must approve you if not you will never rise listen to me your approval is not just in the hands of god alone it's in the hands of men too mm. jesus knew this that's why he had to look for john the baptist what will the son of God be doing? The son of God. Look for John the Baptist. For what? For what? The word that created the heavens and the earth. Searches for John the Baptist. When John sees him, he says, he says, behold the lamb. That's enough to make his head big and say, oh, so you know. Then it means I will go back. He said, no. Suffer it to be so. 
it's an ordinance it's a secret permit it to be so i know that i created you but suffer it to be so that all scriptures will be fulfilled that there be no legal basis for my remaining small listen i know that god has approved you but have men approved you you will think it does not matter go and find out those who made kings in the bible whether the spirit appeared as a ghost god chose them men anointed them kings is it in your bible how god anointed jesus but did, did it come like that no samuel how long will you weep over saul seeing that i rejected him go and take your horn i want to use david but you have refused to cooperate with me i have approved him from heaven but david cannot rise because the man that will pour the oil and approve him refused god approves a man as a king and on earth the authority to accredit him is still negotiating and because of that that person remains grounded listen saul the son of kish was looking for his father's donkey when he met an authority that could approve and he called him he said come go up i will tell you what is in your heart and all of a sudden he anointed saul and poured oil on him and his life changed whoever lied to you that when you say to hell with men you will prosper the bible says believe in the lord your god you want to be established wonderful but if you want to make it in this life brothers and sisters you must submit to god's scriptural pattern of authority your alignment to god's scriptural chain of authority decides how and what flows to you your alignment to god's scriptural chain of authority determines how and what flows to you there are prophets in the bible who were preordained by god to be prophets there were other prophets who were made prophets nowhere in the bible it was never written that they should be prophets amos was not a prophet he was a farmer he was an agriculturist but a man saw him and made him a prophet elisha was not a prophet oh i hope you know that when elijah took his girdle and slapped it on elisha while he was farming elisha started following him the result was that he became a prophet agabus a man in the bible called agabus who gave birth to daughters the bible never tells us that they were serious spiritually but because they were born they came out of a loin the loins of a man who for whatever reason was a prophet the old daughters were prophets too your submission to authority is a mystery that governs promotion ask anybody who is honest enough to admit and tell them the day they began to discern authority what happened in their lives that's why you see those who dishonor the body of christ will never rise you've heard me say this all those who make it a point of duty they insult every man of god they insult every church once it's not your pastor everybody is an object of there is a sin that you can do against the body of christ a man cannot just sin against god alone you can sin against the body of christ and the bible says jealousy is the rage of a man i cannot come and insult a jimmy's wife and expect him to smile the first understanding of authority is your submission to the body 
not just to man of God, not just to spiritual fatherhood, your submission to the body, the multifaceted dimension of God that is scattered in the body, your ability to acknowledge that the body of Christ is a compendium of infinite possibilities, regardless of what your unique biases are, when you love the body, you are ready to access the deep things in the spirit. God will never do business with you when you hate his body. There are people who are fasting giants, but their cynicism against the body. Mention any name of any man of God, they have something to say. Mention the, the, that attitude of sarcasm, and they wonder why regardless of fasting and prayer, nothing comes. The body. The Bible says, for this cause, not discerning the body, many are weak. For this cause, many are sick. This cause, many do sleep. As a ministry, we have clearly defined our position over the body. I love the body of Christ. You will never hear me open my mouth and talk about any man of God and any ministry. It doesn't mean I believe everything. I have my reservations, but I love the body. A wounded bride is still a bride. If a woman injures her hand on her wedding day, does it stop her from marrying? That woman you insult every time, call the church, is someone's wife. Submission to the body. Submission to the body. That you discern that this body of Christ is a compendium of possibilities. The blessing of God always comes to you through alignment to authority. The blessing of God, please everyone listen. The blessing of God will always come to your life through alignment. Write this down. I learned this from Dr. Mike Mudok. The primary purpose of authority is provision, protection, and promotion. Write it down. The primary purpose of authority, the primary purpose of authority is provision, protection, and promotion. Provision. When you submit to authority, you have access to the promotion that that authority commands. When you submit to authority, you have access to the protection. We call it a covering. And when you submit to authority, you have access to promotion. Are we blessed? You can never promote yourself. You can never accredit yourself. Listen, when you see people submit to authority, let me tell you why people hate submission. Come, Pastor Alpha. There are many people, what they are doing is pseudo submission. You know what we call pseudo submission? One leg in, one leg out. You are not exactly there, but you are just there. Who is this guy? Well, he's a very, he's a senior colleague. He's just a brother there. You, are, you, are, you would never rise that way. No way. God is not a fraud star. You are in it or you are out. I will never forget a gentleman who walked up to me one day and said, Sir, I've been looking at you as if he's toasting me. I've been watching you. I've been watching your life, sir. And, uh, you know, I just feel I need to come close to you. I told this, get out of here. Don't, don't waste my time. Go and walk on your pride in the secret place. When your discernment is complete and you understand that not all human beings are pure human beings. Then when you submit to a man, you don't submit to a body. You submit to a system. Are we together? Mm. If you fly a plane, somebody drives it. Even if it is your jet, somebody drives it. The jet is guaranteed to carry you. But not everybody will be a driver. That's how it is in life. Listen no matter how you fear god and no matter how you love god there are things that you will get based on connection you will pray in the secret place god will refer you to his structure 
the bible says the church was built in a very strange way it says christ being the chief cornerstone after that he said it was on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets not just by name then the body was built there are certain graces when you don't encounter in your life you will never rise i know this looks like human worship but these are the secrets that other people who are not very smart oh, they just know how to encounter it the body of christ do you have that discernment i've shared with you how we receive the grace for long life we transported the grace of for long life officially and brought it to this ministry yeah i know how we got it when we stopped at that place that border between Quara State and Ekiti State, there is a strange mystery that goes on there. 142, 132, 125, healthy. Ah, we stopped quickly. We went to the Baba there. We said, Sir, there is a grace for long life here. We wanted the man laughed. He said, Kneel down. He didn't say, Are you a pastor? Because when you go as a pastor, you stay outside. When you submission demands a stripping of whatever robe or regalia and a an acknowledgement that's what we did on a very good day he says sir i'm just returning from a ministry where there are miracles baba do you know me cannot even speak english we got we had to look for an interpreter and he spoke kneel down jerry young people we knelt down and this man began to speak i told you I met the wife of the 132 year old man who died. I think she was like maybe 120 something. You would think she's 60. And I told her, I said, ah, when the woman saw, she tapped me. She said, follow me. I didn't care where I was going. No, no matter what I saw, I would stay there because I know what brought me there. If I was cynical, I said, madam, where are you taking me? I'm a born again believer. No, go there first. She showed me the picture of her youth with the one 32 year old man. Afterwards, we told her that they prayed for us, but since you are the wife, two have become one. The man is dead, you are alive, so he's still alive. And the woman removed her shoes. She said, kneel down. Ah, what do you think I'll do? Hey. Submission. Submission. Let me tell you what many of us will do. <laughs> Mama, just pray. Is that kneeling down? That's pride. You are not receiving a sword. Kneel down. One of the biggest enemy of submission is that we think submission is a way of demeaning our own self. Now, truly speaking, do you know there are people who do that? They purposely demean you in the name of submission. That's wrong. There are insecure men and women of God scouting around for anybody they can call son or daughter to increase their accolades, not because they understand what they have. And they will purposely humiliate you, especially in the open, to show, look, Jesus was with the people who were submissive to him, but you did not even know who Jesus was. They had to use a kiss to identify him. I choose to be like him. You don't have to move around and when people are there, you say, oh, yeah, Pastor Alpha, shift, let them know I'm the one. <laughs> when they know, you can come back. I watch people who hate submission, having passion for sons and daughters. They hate submission. They hate acknowledging authorities. They come for a meeting and see a, a man of God that deserves honor, uh, all protocols duly observed. Ah, uh, Pastor Femi, hi. Is that greeting? That is, that, is, that is the attitude of pride that drives grace down. Look, if you are anointed, you are anointed. It's as simple as that. If it's not there, it's not there. Are we together? Authority. I can share with you encounters after encounters. One of the things I love about the leaders and the people in this ministry and that's why you see that many of them have been able to reproduce this grace is because they understand submission truly speaking i tell you i am very proud of the workers in this ministry i am proud of the heads of department they understand submission
submission is not a way of managing a man of God's insecurity listen never form a team where the loyalty of the people is questionable let me give you an advice if I want to create come 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 darling if I want to establish a company come one two three four if I notice your loyalty is questionable I will sack you what wait wait oh but you are you are gifted just carry your gift and go away with it you only deal ruthlessly with rebellion listen I'm telling you people will interpret it as insecurity but it is irresponsible for a leader to see rebellion and let it go deal with it are we together yes I will not let anybody to be close to me who does not listen to me and acknowledge the authority of the Lord of, on, on my life over him, I will not. I don't hate you, I won't fight you, but you certainly will not be close to me. You know why? Because you will not receive and you will corrupt the passion of others from coming to receive. Because they will say you are close. Why are you not getting this result? I say, yeah, this thing. Is it not we that are close to them? We, we, we that are, if me, I'm close like this. Have you ever seen me heal the sick? So you should be doubting. And I say, ah, you mean it? That anointing is, I didn't say he's fake. Oh, I only said, am I not close to him? Why has it not come on me? Take those kind of people out of your life. I'm, I'm talking to you sincerely. Take them out of your life. Anybody that comes close to you, as I, I don't mean everybody, but as somebody, a man of God, or somebody that God has lifted to a measure, not all of them will submit to you in terms of fatherhood, but they should be able to acknowledge what God is doing in your life, enough to listen when there is time to listen. Are we together now? Yes. If you're in worship team here, and your music director is talking to you, and say, sir, like I read in the book, mm -mm, keep quiet. You do it again, you do it tomorrow. If I'm you, he will never sing here again. No way. It's more than holding the mic and a good voice. You don't listen. That's how one day they'll say, sing after two times transpose. And you invent your own. Everybody transposes only you. And you are just dancing because people are clapping. You are dancing. And you mess up. Team spirit only happens when there is an agreement to submit. Are you listening to what I'm saying? That's why many people never rise. All blessings come. They flow from a scriptural chain of authority. A few weeks ago, Pastor Alpha went to stand in for me for a meeting and a number of our people. And after the meeting, one of the mothers there sent me a text and said, Apostle, you have reproduced yourself verbatim in these people. And I smiled. I said, they deserve it. They deserve it. One of our dear ones here, when he was in the school of ministry, you know this was somebody that god helped and one time he went towards their graduation time he went to minister somewhere and my goodness it was an experience there was such an avalanche of the presence and the power of god and he returned back he was saying ah this and that and that and i told him when you listen and you submit you have it everybody say submission to authority learn it today learn it we have to stop here but if just doing these two things alone the the bible says god called abraham he says a lot went with him is that in your bible lot did what he didn't say abraham said lord let's go lord said i'm going i'm sure abraham said you better go back and lot went with him god called elijah and elisha went with him elisha had sons of the prophets who paid school fees and they were receiving lectures from a lecturer but elisha said since i didn't pay anything i will humble myself and follow he was the one who poured water on the hands of elisha i'm not saying to compel people to worship you please don't do that and I, I know that the leaders in this ministry will not do that don't just make there are times that people do some unnecessary worship you know you have not gotten to the level that demands that you stop it consciously even as i am now there are things there are some mothers 
old enough to be my mother old enough more older than my mother they will see me and they want to kneel down i will be stupid at my age and level to allow a woman kneel down like that say she acknowledges me no if i try to carry her up and she refuses i kneel down with her too that's a wise person so fatherhood is not a way of massaging your ego to watch people worship you while they do it you make sure the crowd is watching no god will punish you for playing with people's lives like that but brothers and sisters there are mysterious benefits to submission one of it is the flow of grace one of it is the flow of grace believe this oh believe this pastor jimmy was telling me yesterday that he was talking with someone a meeting that i'm going for next year somewhere and then he was talking with the person the person had had me mention his name and he you know they got in touch and he was saying sir i've had apostle talk about you so so much and i was so touched yesterday he's just hearing it now hey, Jimmy was talking to me and he said that he told the man he said sir your life and your ministry is about to shift in a way that you will never imagine when he said it i looked at him i said this is somebody who is my friend he's so close to me but that ability to discern some of you you know why god never lets you come close to a man of god your proximity for familiarity your your propensity for familiarity is too bad are we together someone came one day to see me and when he came he saw me eating corn and he was laughing he needed a some and he saw me i was eating corn and he was talking he said yeah he should allow me eat before i pray for him I said, don't be foolish. Didn't you come for prayer? Does eating the corn, does anointing flow through corn or through whatever? If, if you are coming to listen, keep quiet and listen. Otherwise, please walk out of here. You can be sleeping on the same bed with your miracle and lack of submission. There is no woman here who should refuse submitting to her husband any woman that refuses submitting to her husband i don't care whether the husband is a man of god or not listen ladies if you are about to get married make sure you are willing to submit to your husband i am not a i am i will not advocate oppressing women i don't do that but all this women alive movement and all this gender equality thing there is a balance to gender equality i don't oppress ladies I have a great deal of honor and respect for ladies but all this nonsense of what a man can do a woman can do also is is deception no i don't look down on women but the correct position of a woman's victory is under authority please learn this rebellious noisy mouth ladies that cannot submit to authority have signed for a life of defeat and pain listen it's true submission to authority that was the problem with Jezebel. It was obvious I have submitted to her and not the other way around. Because it was her that was running the nation. When he violated the law of submission, there was access to the serpent. God causes you to submit to protect you. I look at people who are in this ministry, but they are not really connected genuinely because I do not see the grace finding expression in their lives. There are people who have never come here. It's not about coming to lie down the altar necessarily. It's not even about sowing into the life of a man of God, carrying his handkerchief, carrying... Some of those things sometimes can just be ritualistic, really. But the truth of it is a connection. Connection is based, the Bible says, as, as um, face answers to face. There is a connection, genuine connection, genuine honor, whether in the secret or in the open. You will never sometimes, before hands are ever laid on you, you will walk in that grace and reproduce it verbatim. Why have you not entered certain breakthroughs that you see? It is because submission is not genuine. Submission is not genuine. Praise the Lord first fatherhood but then second a recognition of people that have gone ahead of you you notice sometimes when i'm counseling people 
when someone comes is talking about issue finance or breakthrough or this i say please go to a jimmy sometimes they can see a jimmy laughing there and they just go and stand this guy and i say you remain poor and broke there because you are not willing to listen this guy you see carries a strange grace for wealth and abundance i've worked with Jimmy for years that grace on him came from his late mother yes my first genuine watch genuine watch not all those things genuine watch then the mom gave me from uk that watch never spoiled i sold it painfully nobody invents mantles they are transferred so if you ever see it on someone it left somewhere to come there don't trivialize it the men may be young but the mantles are ancient it's like water please help it's like water do you know the water on earth is older than everybody it keeps recycling that means somebody drank it abraham drank the water you are drinking isaac because it only recycles the crops can come out the corn i'm eating abraham they eat it but the water in the sea oh no come on that's how mantles are this healing grace nobody invents it nobody even if you receive directly from god to you it was an encounter but when god shows you the dynamics it was a connection i've taught you on systems nobody will ever walk on pros in prosperity insulting kenneth copeland start from anywhere in the world the mantles keep connecting themselves until it gets to the final person kenneth copeland is not carrying a mantle of he is the system on earth to the body that represents that possibility you want to walk in the anointing and in the healing ministry start from any man of god you keep connecting until it gets to benihin now currently you see that you don't invent a road that has been found there are people who are millionaires today they are not smart 90 percent of what we teach in business schools they don't know anything about it but they were just stupid enough to discern there is an ancient mystery i've shared with you my story remember the two women Ejimi, that i bought sugar cane for two women that were wearing tattered dresses i bought paid sugar cane for them a woman that cannot afford 50 naira now blesses me and says, my son forever walk upon gold that's what the woman told me forever walk upon gold i believe i received a strange i don't believe that woman was a pure human being i believe they were angels in disguise i don't believe that woman was a pure human being i have had many encounters like that but this one was strange <sighs> my life opened overnight the race is not to the swift i'm showing you how these systems work in the kingdom I've shared with you how I went to Canaan land to go and sow a seed to Bishop David Oedipo. When I finished all of that, I came out. When I came out, please help this lady. I came out. I, would, I had already been working in signs and wonders. Boarded flight by myself to go and sow a seed to a man of God. Most of you do it, but it's not genuine. You just do it for the sake of it. Listen more greatness produced from alignment that it will be done from knowledge more greatness will come from alignment in the days to come than it will come from knowledge i will teach you about knowledge i teach you about skill but brothers and sisters there are ancient dimensions that are not subject to just knowledge you can enter a reality before your mind catches up I remember when people i didn't used to work very strongly in the prophetic you no know, here and there god will help me but it wasn't anything serious i remember 
when I was browsing William Branham, people were lambasting that guy, saying nobody's carrying his anointing, nobody's carrying all these insults. They insult men of God. Be careful. I remember watching his video one night, early in the morning, and I just sat down. Tears were rolling down my eyes. I saw the humility and the compassion from that man. I said, how could people, this guy was a thousand times more humble than me and yet people keep talking about him and all of a sudden i felt it was like something on my head it took like 30 minutes it was coming down the next meeting i went to it was like a joke i started seeing names on people over people's head i said this is strange don't ignore submission you will pay for it i know you went to school but let me tell you there are people who read let me not call the name of any course had that class but were connected to an ancient mantle that can manipulate realities and today they are working in nmpc they've been working in nmpc for decades with a past degree they've been sacking anybody but the grace that brought there still keeps them you would think they've been sleeping around no sir listen before you submit to an authority discern the graces at work discern the forces at work discern it don't just sit down and say i am this i am this whether you call you say papa you say whatever you will never discern it discern it how you know you are genuinely connected is that the results start reproducing in your life sometimes in a shocking way let me tell you if we send a dog from koinonia dog d-o-g i carry this handkerchief and tie it on that dog i promise you and i send it for a crusade people will rise up from wheelchairs and the sick the power of god will flow it's not about the dog it's about what is carrying there are some things that are not just based on your personal work are you getting what i'm saying now god said it's the year of triumph he knows that there are many things you don't know and if he's to wait just on some things that you need to know to prosper the natural way will take years before you really understand it but there is a system when he said it there was already a provision but you are refusing to tap into it because of pride I see favor every day in my life every day is one thing I know if you ever are looking for the grace for favor and you have been looking around and you are not getting it you are a liar and you are calling God a liar and God will not be happy with you because that grace is more than available it's just that people don't know it There is nothing I'm wearing from my head to my toe that I bought with my money. No, plus my stockings, head to toe. Favor is real. You can sit and argue it in pride. Say it doesn't matter and sit down there. But you can believe and say, but Lord, this is possible. <sighs> Your life changes automatically. Do you believe this thing I'm sharing with you? I've taught you two things today the price to develop intimacy and the price of genuine connection genuine connection genuine connection you come for koinonia here you see manifestations of the spirit there are people like that they have reproduced it everywhere frankly speaking they can tell you i'm in a meeting say i didn't even pray honestly i just said father we give you thanks and people started for even then they will go back and say hey, but god thank you for covering for me it's alignment it's alignment when he dedicated the jerusalem temple he turned and said lord whoever faces here he didn't say if he prays well once he turns this direction and he aligns with this direction please hear them so when daniel was in trouble he couldn't depend on his personal work he opened the gates towards Jerusalem and said, this is a matter of life and death. I can't afford to take risk and play with myself. Hallelujah. 
it is the Lord's doing. Then it is marvelous. Marvelous. Go to Ida and you, you go to you go to Destiny Makers International, Pastor Alpha's ministry. It's like koinonia reproduced verbatim. Now, the shocking part, how you know this is grace reproduced, is that not all of them have come here. Let me tell you something about spirit transfer. You don't have to learn it. The anointing will make you do it. Are we together now? The anointing will make you think in a certain way. It will make you understand scripture in a certain way to produce certain outcomes. It's a year of triumph because there is a possibility for a transfer. There are some things you should never cry about in this ministry. One of it is the presence of God. One of it is the favor of God. One of it is the gift of men. One of it is the mantle for honor. One of it is revelation and understanding. One of it is prayer. One of it is influence. Do you not see the graces flying around looking for those with discernment to receive? The stranger comes, visits Koinonia once and carries that thing and goes back and their life changed. There are people listening to me right now from Mubi. It was, I think it was yesterday I got the text. When I went there just a few weeks ago, I prophesied to them because their roads are bad. And I told them, I said, in the name of Jesus, I attract the attention of the government here to fix this road. Just yesterday, the governor was there and they commit you, you. Okay, you were there when we got the text. The governor came there, commissioned the road. See, let me tell you this thing. Don't wait till your life gets too bad. I know the dimension of the prophetic God gave me. It's called the creative dimension of prophecy. Creation. You make things happen. You program them in the realm of the spirit. You hear people come to testify here. It's not just about speaking. Brothers and sisters, don't delay your life by yourself. Come live in me. Oh my life. Take over. Come live in me. And I will rise. Hallelujah. You are a parent, yeah? When your children get to the age of discretion, the moment they can think and they can understand, lead them to Jesus consciously. It is very responsible. Lead them to Jesus. If you have not done so as you go back home, don't just say, my children are smart. Call them. Preach the gospel to them. The moment they, are, they can think, they should be born again. Please, be take let nobody stay in your roof. You have a neighbor that is squatting with you. He's not serious. It doesn't matter. No, it does. No, it does. No, it does. They can choose to reject Jesus. That's all right. No one goes to hell because he's a sinner. Everybody goes to hell because he rejected Jesus. That is the sin that takes men to hell. I rejected him. I had a choice, but I rejected him. Jesus, carry your load and walk out of my life those of you in front here I truly appreciate you whatever you have in this life if Jesus is not above it is useless let me just tell you the truth I want to lead you in an honest prayer I know some of you are crying overflow one two three those online please listen I'm not asking you whether you're a business mogul I'm not asking you whether you have how many degrees all those things are useless when you are no longer here. I'm going to lead you in an honest prayer and I want you to pray from the depth of your heart. Listen to what you are saying and pray it loud. Are you ready now? Say after me with all your heart, passionately, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. This night, I make up my mind and I make a commitment to serve you and to live for you from today 
till eternity I declare that Jesus is Lord of my life I declare that my sins are forgiven I declare that the life of God eternal life is mine today Holy Spirit I receive you as the life of God in my spirit I declare that I'm a child of God forever let me pray for you father I thank you for these ones they have unashamedly come the Bible says that if you are ashamed of me before men I'll be ashamed of you before my father Jesus speaking Lord these ones have come opening their hearts genuinely to receive of your grace I ask you oh God you who is the helper of us all help them I declare your sins forgiven I declare that the righteousness of God is at work in you the grace to live a victorious Christian life the grace for passion and intimacy with God is released upon you in the name of Jesus Christ every pain and every legal access the devil has over your life is hereby broken forever in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen I congratulate every one of you not listen I know that some of you are rededicating your life to Christ there are a number of you those in here I just want you to walk out this way and then the various overflows I know that there are people attending to them they will have your details I praise you very quickly and you return back to join us in the service I salute you thank you so much for your courage your life will never be the same God bless you please direct them make sure someone is directing them make sure someone is directing them hallelujah amen please sit down hallelujah there are two ministries that I believe will be reignited in a fresh dimension two very great anointings I really believe with all my heart and and it's been confirmed from different people seasoned veterans of the gospel across the earth number one is the healing ministry I believe that the church has lost a major dimension of the healing ministry it's true even some of us that supposedly walk in it the truth is that most people have not experienced the full import of the healing ministry the healing ministry I'm going to be showing you a few things and then we'll pray we'll get to the business of the night the healing ministry is very important it played a major role the challenge was that most of the healing evangelists got to a point where they were carried away by the healing and no longer Christ and his purposes because the healing ministry is a means is a sign that points men to Jesus it's possible that because of the charismatism around the healing ministry you can veer off and your whole focus becomes the miraculous and not the Christ himself the second ministry that I believe will be experienced is the ministry of wealth and abundance it's true this wealth transfer that you've heard people say I believe that God has suspended that dimension for a reason because as a body we are not yet ready for that dimension the our perspectives about kingdom wealth and finance does not warrant God releasing that level of blessings because for many of us our hearts are still corrupt over the idea of money are we together the average person's idea about money is just some kind of um, it is just a, a quest to get and buy nice clothes and nice cars and prove that I am successful there is a place for that but if that is the scope of your idea then you do not need any wealth transfer are we together 
Yes. So God must first walk upon our hearts. It's the same way years ago there was a very strange manifestation of a lot of things that happened in Zaria. Angelic feathers, gold dust, silver dust. You know, people started having these strange encounters. And one, I remember one night the Lord told me, he said, I'm withdrawing this experience because it's leading to idolatry. It didn't reach one month and that experience was withdrawn. People will go to pray and for hours, all they are doing is checking their hands to see if there's any gold or silver to use it as an evidence to validate spirituality. And God said, no, if I don't take it away, one demon will give it an innocent prayer warrior a feather and he will carry it and idolize it in his room until he begins to mislead another group of people and so god withdrew that experience god only releases experiences to people and territories where there is a level of maturity and discernment he knows that when this reality reaches the people they will not abuse it until now as i speak to you there are people who don't understand the purpose of money and it is being abused and so God will not release it until the body is taught. The money is safer with Bill Gates. It's safer with all of these people than it is with preachers and pastors. Because they have worked on their minds. They are better treasurers for God than us. So all, it is true that there is a wealth transfer coming. But not, not some money monger kind of thing. It won't come that way. Anyway, I just thought to share that. Let's look at the ministry of Jesus. Luke chapter 6. I study the Gospels a lot because the ministry of Jesus inspires me. He's the greatest model that I have. And I like to, I like to study his idea. What did he do? What was captured in his ministry? Luke chapter 6 and verse 17 to 19. Luke chapter 6 verse 17 to 19 this is Jesus now having the sermon on the mount okay I'll just read it from here and he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of the disciples a great multitude of people listen out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear now listen carefully the people came to hear amplified says to listen to him he came to hear him and to be healed there is a relationship between hearing and being healed they didn't just come to be healed they came to hear and to be healed verse 18 or still verse 17 to be healed of all their diseases 18 and they that were vexed with unclean spirits so we see the kind of people that came for jesus's meetings those who were sick they were sick terribly diseased they came to listen to him there was something he taught them about listening to his words and the healing power of god so they came to hear and to be healed the second category of people we see they that were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed unclean spirits the source of their pain and their discomfort were the presence of unclean spirits and the bible says and the whole multitude listen sought to touch him why for there went power out of him to heal them. I love the ministry of Jesus. So the Bible tells us why the people got healed. That there was power. Other versions say virtue. There was something that Jesus had that would lead him into the people. And the moment it entered them, they would discover that their sicknesses were gone. Are we together? Acts chapter 10 when you read verse 38 Peter was teaching that was a salvation of the Gentiles in the house of Cornelius the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 with the Holy Ghost and with power listen it says who went about doing good went about doing good went about doing good so we see other things that Jesus did that were not captured he didn't just heal the sick alone 
He didn't just deliver the oppressed alone. He went about doing good. Breakthrough is a good thing. Restoration is a good thing. He went about doing good and then healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Any ministry that wants to reproduce Jesus' ministry and, and by the way, I hope you know that what we do today is an extension of his ministry. Jesus' ministry did not end with his ascension to heaven. Are we together now? He said, it is expedient that I go. Why? So that the comforter will come. It is to your advantage, advantageous to you that I go. Because my transition will allow the Holy Spirit to come. Like the mantle of Elijah came on Elisha. Now that mantle that was on Jesus, the spirit himself without measure. So that we can partake of that spirit and become an extension of his ministry. We are gathered tonight as proof that the ministry of Jesus has not ended. We are gathered tonight because we believe that he still heals. Do you believe that? We are gathered tonight because we believe that he still delivers. We are gathered tonight because we believe he still does good. Hallelujah. The Bible says, as the father had sent me. This is Jesus speaking. The Father sent me. I now send you as the Father sent me. Both in terms of the scope of the assignment and the equipping. The Father sent me with power. And every time I spoke, something left me to validate what he said. He said, so also I sent you. You see, if the power of God does not back up his word, it's fraud. It is the power of God that validates the truth, the potency of God's word. So at some point in this service, we should expect the power of God to find expression. Not just in people, you know, receiving impartations here and they're wonderful. But we expect the power of God to heal the sick. We expect the power of God to cleanse all kinds of unclean people who are cohabiting with demon spirits that are manipulating their lives and manipulating their results at some point in this service we should see the superiority of light over darkness is that true at some point in this service god should be able to step over your issue to see that that 10 year long issue just dissolves like this just like that is that true if that happens then we can say with all sense of gratitude that we are an extension of the ministry of Jesus. But listen to me, brothers and sisters, if this does not happen, we are wasting God's time and we are wasting the time of God's precious people. That's why we prepare for all of the meetings, especially the miracle service, because you have not just come to watch a man, you have come to see an extension of the ministry of Jesus. You have come with your requests. You have come with your medical reports. You have come with your pain. You have come with all kinds of oppression. You have come with all kinds of closed heaven. And you're saying, Lord, if you are the only one I know who can help me, let me tell you, your coming is faith enough. Did you hear what I said? You're leaving your house to come is faith enough. It's true. Like a patient goes to the hospital. Once you are in the hospital, just leave the rest to the doctor. Then the doctor begins to prescribe. And this is what is happening to us. An extension of the ministry of Jesus. Let's look at one scripture. Mark chapter 1, 21. Mark chapter 1 and verse 21. And they went into Capernaum still the ministry of Jesus and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered the synagogue and taught it's interesting how Jesus held his crusades he would take out time not just to preach but to teach Jesus knew that teaching was the system for sustaining anything that the people were to receive are we together if the entire scope of ministry is just miracles alone it, it becomes volatile the people receive it and then it just evaporates but when they are taught it guides their understanding to keep
keep that which they have received you can lose something you have received it's true you can lose healing demons can leave people and re-enter them again but when the word of god is taught it gives you the basis are we together now so jesus taught in their synagogues we're reading it's, it's a long reading let's see how far we can go just keep just continue and they were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes 23 and there was in their synagogue i love jesus see how his miracle service was as soon as he just finished preaching it was time to demonstrate the reality of the kingdom and there was in that service a man with an unclean spirit and the demons began to cry out 24 saying let us alone what have we to do with thee thou jesus of nazareth art thou come to destroy us we know who you are the holy one of god and so on and so forth and jesus rebuked him saying hold your peace and come out of him this is jesus for you this is jesus for you because that man's life was obviously in shambles because there was another spirit that was cohabiting with that individual manipulating his intentions and jesus looked at him this does not reflect the kingdom and he brought that spirit out like it's going to happen to many people the forces and the spirits that are responsible for the results we do not want but keep seeing until they leave all these things are a joke when the unclean spirit had turned him he cried out in a loud voice and he came out of him 27 we're reading down to i think it was 39 or so i just want us to walk through the ministry of jesus and they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves saying what thing is this what new doctrine is this for with authority he commanded even the unclean spirits and they do obey him let me tell you this when you command an unclean spirit and it goes it is a big deal did you hear what i said <laughs> doctors can treat sickness they can cast out devils machines can show an elongated lung or heart but it cannot show the spirit sitting there are you hearing what i'm saying these spirits are living entities they can hear they have a system and a structure. They were designed to respect some people and disobey some people. Are we together? They understand ranking in the spirit. So when you issue a command, as Jesus did, and these spirits are forced against their will to leave that individual and that habitation is proof of dominion. Are we together? Yes, it is. It truly is proof of dominion. Look at Jesus used this. The people were astonished. They said our priests and rabbis didn't do this. They couldn't do this. I hope you know that while all the priests used to preach, that man was in the temple and the spirits were hearing. But the words were not potent enough to force them to leave. So they kept coming service after service. May you not be a man of God that cohabits with demons. And that people come and sit under your anointing and under your meeting. And the demons that cause poverty, failure, whatever it is. You share the grace and they share the grace with you. And you go out. No, sir. Haba. What then is the excellency of light over darkness? Your presence should discomfort the gate of hell. So well that there is no pretending about it. That's why some of you bring people here. You notice you bring them and when they sit down while praise and worship is happening, they want to run away. It's not them. It's not them. The devil knows that when you come into an environment that can bring you emancipation, Satan will revolt and fight and fight again and again. But tonight the devil is a liar. It's too late. Really, it's too late. 28 and immediately his fame spread abroad all through the region round about galilee and forthwith when they were come out of the synagogue they entered into the house of simon and andrew with james and john let's see what happened and simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever 
And Anon, they tell him of her. Now, Jesus is healing. We saw him cast out devils. He's about to heal now. And he came and took her by the hand. I love Jesus. And lifted her up. And how, may, how long? Immediately. Immediately. Do you know if Jesus did not touch her, she would remain like that? And you would think it's the will of God. Don't trivialize an anointed hand. Goodness. Jesus walks in and says, I'm introducing something to this woman's body. That until the arrival of that thing, the condition does not change. That contact. The Bible says immediately the fever did what? That means the fever was a living thing. It could move. Abba, is it, are you not intelligent people? The fever left. Pastor Alpha left me. Before Jesus came, the fever was with her. They gave it all kinds of interpretation. Jesus, look at what Jesus did. He didn't talk. He just touched. The Bible didn't say they shall lay hands on the sick and speak. Just by making contact alone. Are you seeing that now? Some, it was about the transference of virtue. And it forced the spirit. There was a separation. That means the discomfort you feel is because there is something with you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. That means that growth, that swelling is a sign that there is something with you. Ah, but the hands of Jesus extended through us. You see that? I, I'm, I'm creating expectation in you. That means that pile would never have been piled until a spirit came in partnership with your body. And just saying pile go is not what will, will make it go. There is an agency that will separate you from that pile. You will call it a miracle. There is no reason to remain sick when the spirit has been separated. Look at it. Immediately, not slowly. So the question is not whether you can be healed. The question is whether the anointing is sufficient to separate that spirit. Because when it happens, the Bible says immediately. And she was so healed, she went straight to the kitchen. Straight to the kitchen from a bed. And he came and took her by the hand. And brought unto him all that were there at even when the sun did set. Like Koinonia now. They brought unto him. That means there was an information that had reached town. That when we bring certain people to this man, there was something about him that was able to heal them. They brought unto him all that were what? Diseased. And them that were possessed with devils. See the kind of people that came to Jesus. As a man of God, if these kinds of people are not coming to you, it's not the issue of I'm not called into this ministry. Something is wrong. Because they should discern that the hand of God upon your life should function in a pattern similar to that of Jesus and should make them bring certain people. There are, there are creative dimensions that his anointing can bring. Creation is needed when there is no possibility of having that reality again. Then you create it. Not everyone may be sick. But let me tell you something. Everyone needs the hand of God. There are some of us, our heavens are closed totally. And don't act as if it's not important. Nobody is favoring you. No open door. You are born again, but your life and your door and destiny is closed. Can you trust God to open this door for you? It's not by might. It's not by power. You heard the testimony of, of uh, Joy. She said an uncle who does not even call her something made that uncle call brothers and sisters because that uncle also has relatives somewhere everybody who blesses you has someone in need around him what makes him to leave them and come to you no are we blessed one question I'll ask you and then we'll begin to pray are you truly tired of the situation you see there's something I think I was sharing with, I can't remember who I was sharing this with. I was saying pain. It was you, Jimmy. Pain is very important. Sometimes the only way to let people see your sister, allow that pain, don't stop it. 
because there are people if you have not been pushed to the wall you will not see the need for God for as long as there is somebody answering your prayer for you you will not see the need to be serious so sometimes God deliberately allows it and that pain the day five of your children said daddy is this how we'll continue you just get up and say I'm coming for koinonia today I'm, I'm tired of this that pain was an indication that something is wrong and that it needs remedy fast pain there are people who never run and come to God but you just press one side of your stomach and you just feel ah something is growing what is this next week the thing increased you told a doctor just touch it and say, ah, I don't want to tell you the name pain just say when is that miracle service said The power of God is real. It can produce miracles. It will produce miracles in your life tonight. Do you believe it? I expect that not only would God heal the sick, not only will he cast out devils. Listen carefully. I expect that tonight by his spirit, he will lift you out of certain captivities, lack of favor, delay there are some of us you are trusting god to return certain things that left your life for years whoever told you it cannot you heard the lady that said they stole her phone they came with machete and stole her phone i remember she sent me a text that they came to carry a machete foolish thieves they don't know that a body without a spirit is dead The same way you have been carrying a certificate. That's the body. Where is the spirit component? That's why you drop it on a table and they throw it in a dustbin. But when the spirit component comes, let me tell you this. God never designed a man to do anything on earth unassisted. A spirit entity must assist you. Even you, if you meet a herbalist, that herbalist is not alone. There is a spirit assisting him. You see that? Yes. Don't walk through life by your strength and power. Please help them. Life will be too hard for you. Is is the mystery of hardship. Rejecting the assistance of the spirit. I would dare not do ministry without the spirit. What else will I be doing? But with God, with God, all things without him you are on your own but when you involve him and not only involve him go a step further by letting him lead the way then your life becomes a wonder i'm showing you many of you are surprised the same surprise was in the bible they were astonished what manner of man is this astonished and then the man if he's wise will tell you look i'm not alone Jesus said, I'm not alone. All these miracles you see, I'm being assisted. Brothers and sisters, the result you see in this ministry is a product of assistance. The realm of the spirit is in partnership. You can't be standing here and someone is shouting outside, shouting at overflow. No, no. Habba. Words are not hammer. But when the spirit is upon them, that word will enter you like a drug. And all of a sudden, you will find out that certain things will go. <laughs> It will work in Zaria, it will work in Lagos, it will work in London, it will work in Saudi Arabia, it will work everywhere. Are we together? Mm. The spirits that oppress us must give way. I'm, gi I'm taking out time to charge your heart like this because I want you to receive. The most important thing is not the ministrations as it were. The most important thing is creating this expectation. Many of us come and we are just hoping. Um, okay, God, I know you will bless me. In the name of Jesus, may God lift you. Amen. I just, well, it was a nice service. And you go back and nothing happens. You keep watching people come to testify. Blessed is she that believes, the Bible says, for unto her, not unto them, there shall be a performance. Hallelujah. I believe the Lord. I came here full of the Holy Ghost and I came here believing with all my heart. You are sick, get ready to be healed. Don't, don't, don't say, well, let's watch and see. Get ready to be healed. 
you are oppressed of the devil you may not even know you are oppressed you just know that nothing is working in your life i want you to be tired and say god will you bring me here so especially for those of you who came so far lord will you carry me and bring me here and take me back like that there are some of you in ministry you came to contact fire lord will you leave me will i leave my members my fellowship and come back here and go back no evidence of favor i believe him i believe that he's a mighty man i believe he's awesome i have seen his hand i have seen his power and ladies and gentlemen i present to you the same god yesterday today forever i present to you the same healer yesterday today forever i present to you the same deliverer i present to you the one who took joseph from the prison overnight i present to you the one who turned saul to the apostle i present to you the one who turned rahab to be part of the genealogy of jesus i present to you your destiny changer i present to you your destiny maker i present to you the anointer of men the one who puts oil upon the head of ordinary people and changes their life i present to you the prosperer the one who can program a climate of favor over a man as though you are holding a child I present to you the one who can give you influence can lift you from nothing and make your life a wonder a specimen an epistle of his hand that's the God I present to you I have given a very nice speech we're about to step back and allow the king of glory ride over this place and let me watch the mountain that stands before him let me watch Zerubbabel. Oh, no, no. He said, Who art thou mountain? Who art thou mountain? Who art thou infirmity? Who art thou delay? Who art thou stagnation? Before Zerubbabel. He said, Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt be made plain. Lift your hands, I want to pray. The Lord is starting tonight with an impartation. There is an impartation of the grace for favor. This is what the Lord is telling me. The grace for favor. The grace, I'm about to pray, for favor. Favor is a revelation that God has given me. My life is a testimony of that reality. I want to pray for you now. Believe. Believe as I pray. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare right now. Father. Even as you have revealed to me. From this main auditorium. To overflow one. Overflow two. Overflow three and those online lord i release an impartation for the grace for favor receive it right now in the name of jesus receive that grace in the name of jesus receive that grace in the name of jesus i stretch my right hand and i decree and declare step into a new level of favor step into a new level of favor Step into a new level of favor. 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 We need favor in our lives. Most of the things we pray about 
are under the office of favor to solve i say it again in the name of jesus every challenge in your life that only the favor of god can solve i stand before the god who has helped me and has helped this ministry i release upon you an oil of favor take it now in the name of jesus take favor take favor receive favor in the name of jesus christ a strange dimension of favor favor that will surprise you favor that will accelerate your life when a life listen to me when a life has no favor it is clear the proof of lack of favor is the absence of helpers in your life not the absence of money you can have money you can have intellect you can have a job but when there are no men in your life you don't have favor the proof of favor is not the coming of money the proof of favor is the rapid response from men to attend to the issues of your life in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare that the men that must show up in your life to validate the grace for favor i prophesy them upon you now i call them by prophecy in the name of jesus upon your business upon your job upon your projects may men arise to help you Hallelujah. There is the grace for favor. Those of you who are on the social media may have heard of a testimony that had been trending for a while. I traveled to Lagos last week and just when we got down from the aircraft on my way going, listen carefully, something is happening here. A young man just walked to me and held me and I looked at him and he said, sir, remember me. I said, well, I don't remember you. What's the story? He came here, Koinonia, with a property, his property, and carried it and gave me as a seed. I said, what for? I mean, you're a young man. What will you go and tell your wife? Brothers and sisters, from November till now, nine properties and one estate came to him. A young guy. Kampa. Is it charm? what is on you is what brings things to your life it's not what you want it is what is on you in the name of jesus that anointing that must come on you i declare that it comes on your head right now it comes upon your head right now producing strange results it comes upon your head right now it comes upon your head right now just follow me some of you don't know how you need favor you know you need favor but you don't know what extent I can't imagine that there are human beings that live on this earth without favor you will never be able to be happy on earth no I can you check let's check our lives the truth is for many of us there is no favor it's not that the helpers are not there there has to be something on you to bring them every lifting that God has brought by his grace happened in this Zaria not London Zaria here many of us live unrewarded lives because there is nothing on you drawing men to bless you nobody thinks about you god does not talk to anybody about you a gentleman i think one of these uh, i can't remember one of these fridays and he stood to see me after the service and he said man of god my life is hard can you help me with some money and i looked at him i said you are not a wise gentleman i know you need money now but you should ask yourself the person giving you the money where did it come from the wiser prayer is for favor i said let's do an experiment i told him 
I said, I will pray for you for favor. Return next Friday and tell me what happened. If nothing happens, I will give you money. Agreed? He said, yes. And I prayed for him. And he went. Brothers and sisters, on Monday, Monday, that's the Monday after, that gentleman sent me a text. And he said, his uncle, that he's even fighting with their father that he did a very serious transfer and told him that who helps you in school and he said nobody he said so why have you not been reaching me all of you these proud children and so on and so forth that he was going to start sending him money i said you you believe that that uncle just did it by his will listen this world is too wicked for somebody to just like you that's flattery this wicked world where a man can slaughter a child's head then what makes you believe they will just like you enough to see that you rise it takes favor can i pray that prayer for you again in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god you have done your best you have done your efforts you have struggled it's almost killing you now receive the grace for favor receive the grace for favor May your life change by favor. Receive the grace for favor. Hallelujah. It is favor that brings resources. It is favor that brings opportunity. There are many gifted people. There's no one to reward them. There are many nice people, many wonderful musicians, nobody to place a demand on their grace. It's so annoying when you see someone you are better than, but he has favor and you don't. And yet you have to say yes, sir. Her man did not think Mordecai was good enough, but favor. And he said, everywhere you see the chariots of Mordecai, bow the knee, Mordecai is passing. Yes, a gatekeeper. You may not like a person, but when favor is on them, it will veto whatever you think. I pray for you again. Every door that must open in this season to validate favor, I command it to be open now. I command it to be open now. Listen. You're not going to build a house by savings let me tell you the truth it's not in today's nigeria you're not going to buy a car by saving no I practice all these things you are not going to to settle and train your children just by saving money you will need a grace that can accelerate your results otherwise you will never be a giver you will never you can't be a giver just by saving peanuts 10 naira and 100 naira when there is a demand life will demand so much from you that if you are not operating under favor you will be frustrated and that's how satan wants to trap men he would trap you and make your life miserable let's release this favor on our families you have received it for yourself but let it get to your family i pray for you in the name of jesus christ my father every family that is represented here by the anointing of the holy spirit let there be a release of favor let there be a release of favor favor on every family favor on every family listen sometimes eh it is not warfare that destroys it is even how favor works favor can kill to make sure that one person rises some of these proud relatives that make fraternities with darkness and sit upon the destinies of families and make boasts and say for as long as we are there you must route your success through us if you attempt to rise without us you will not rise i declare that the sword of favor may it get to every family and dislodge everybody who wants to be god in that family hallelujah favor in one minute 
I want you to begin to mention all the areas you want to see favor and speak. Lift your voice. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Participate. Lord, I release favor concerning this job. Pray. I release favor. I release favor. Favor concerning my building project. I release favor. Are you praying? Favor. You surround us with favor like a shield. You surround us with favor like a shield. Pray, make sure you are praying in the name of Jesus. Favor like a shield. my academics pray favor over my job Lord favor 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 hallelujah listen let me tell you the truth you see ba this prayer you are praying if this prayer is truly answered in your life this is how you will stand what is this this favor prayer you see there are people who have touched up this favor they can tell you favor is fearful in its operation is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness and they carry the crippled man I don't deserve the palace he says still come and the king said you will sit here and eat with me let me tell you how you know it is favor listen favor is not one time when somebody just says hey Jimmy I want to give you water what that's just goodness favor is I want to keep blessing you I want to continue doing this many of us what happens is that we mistaken goodness for favor someone just appear once and just says look i want to help you and it never happens again when it is favor a process is ignited it keeps following like that it's true study the things in your life you'll be able to separate goodness from favor there are things that just happen one time but favor favor continues so i'm seeing fire on my hands and I want to pray because the Lord wants to bless the works of our hands. Listen, whether you are on a job or whatever it is, you see, these hands you see, they are, it's a mystery. It says, the, the hand of God, it was with this hand God made man. Are we together now? This hand you see is a symbol of your productivity and if it is not blessed it will bring struggle to you i want to pray I'm, I'm seeing fire on my hands and i want to pray because for many of us who are getting results but our results are too small i stretch these hands the fire that the lord put upon this hand in the name of jesus i release it let it come upon your hands let it come upon your hands representing your job your academics your business whatever it is that you're involved in i release i stretch my hands may that may that fire come upon you in the name of jesus christ you go back with that hand and write a proposal and it will shock you what will happen you go back with that hand listen listen believe this and pick up a document and submit and someone collects it and is under the influence of what your hand brought it's true it's true why does god do these things to give us rest so we can serve him why does god open doors to give you rest financial frustration and all kinds of related frustrations are strategies from Satan 
to distract you and make you to keep seeking things you never will truly be able to seek God when certain things have not been solved in your life it's true you can't give God your best when you are still thinking of what to eat you are thinking of what to wear but when God takes those things away your prayer life becomes worship not just hours of petition in the flesh hallelujah hallelujah overflow two there's someone the anointing of the spirit is coming on someone overflow two the overflow by the roadside Bring the lady. Hello, him, Adonai. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Overflow to the overflow by the road. Please, quickly. We have to hurry up. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Hello, him, Adonai. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Can I talk to you, madam? This woman, please tap her for me. Come. Hello, him, there is a spirit that doesn't want this woman to rise. Hello, him, Thy kingdom come, thy will be. The Lord is opening the eyes of your parents. I'm seeing the Lord opening their eyes to a realization of something the devil has been using. In the name of Jesus, especially for this lady, I command it so now. In the name of Jesus Christ, that every conspiracy of darkness over you and your family is hereby crushed to pieces. In the name of Jesus. Madam, I don't know who you are, but let me pray for you. There is a spirit. I look at you and I see a woman who should be walking in certain realms of favor. You love the Lord. But this is like, it's like a trap. You just cannot move and make progress. And the Lord is saying I should pray for you. As I pray for you, madam, you will be surprised to see what happens in your life. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman. The devil has put something in this lady's stomach. This lady you are holding. I command in the name of Jesus, remove that evil you have put now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm about to pray. And I'm already seeing a vision of what will happen. There will be such a massive, massive, massive deliverance. Now, let it not surprise you. I've explained to you what this thing is. It's a separation. You should rejoice when it happens. Because it means that you are entering a new season. 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 A new season.
a new season, a new season, a new season. Something is breaking. Breaking. I don't need to walk everywhere. I'm just walking as the Holy Ghost is leading me. A new season. Something is breaking. 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 A new season. There is a cloud of glory. There is a cloud of glory. A new season. No force can stand it in your life. There is an anointing here. There is an anointing here. A new season. Something is breaking here. Right now in the name of Jesus. Something is breaking here in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Receive it. Something is leaving you. Something is leaving you. It must go. Shake it, take it, take it, take it. Shake it, take it, take it. And take a name of New season. New season. I stretch my hand. Something is breaking here. There's someone an anointing is coming on you. Breaking a limitation right now. In the name of Jesus. I command that spirit. Leave that lady now. In the name of Jesus. from me and it will come and create that separation I want you to bring them out overflow one two three wherever in the mighty name of Jesus the God of Jeshurun I decree and declare that every force sitting on your destiny as you count three as you count Jesus at the count of three let there be deliverance one two three Let them go now. Let them go now. Shake it, take it, take it, take it. break it to Scotobata. Witchcraft, manipulations of darkness. In the name of Jesus, I command a separation through the greatness of thy power. Shall thy enemies submit? I decree. I set it as an ordinance in the spirit. I announce liberty. Liberty, bring them out. Christ if there is any family 
that has been covenanted to any elements of the supernatural whether the earth whether fire that people pass through fire to make ordinances at the count of three I command those ordinances set on fire one two three let there be liberation right now every family covenanted to the waters covenanted to the air to trees I set you free now map and I'm seeing or your state or your state this is the hand of God the sword of the spirit going to or your state bringing deliverance there are times that God moves this way in the name of Jesus I command whoever is from that region may the power of God begin to touch you now may the power of God begin to touch you now complete liberty complete liberty overflow three please lift your hands just watch your screen and lift your hands overflow three don't worry you you that you you don't have to bring them the distance is far overflow three just look at me i see the angels of the lord doing something there at the count of three overflow three i want you to shout the name jesus because i'm seeing swords that's what i'm seeing and the lord is bringing a massive massive breakthrough massive deliverance in the name of the lord jesus overflow three are you ready i'm seeing chains of stagnation about to leave you right now in the name of jesus everyone under any kind of oppression at the count of three shout jesus one two three hallelujah hallelujah we are going to pray for the sick shortly hold on guys hold on hold on hold on please i want to pray the lord is showing me something that is very interesting the lord wants to break cycles there are people every season certain things happen every september somebody must die every three three years somebody married must divorce in the name of Jesus, lift your hands. You don't have to ask whether or not you are involved. Don't worry, the anointing will look for you. I decree and declare right now in the name of Jesus, the power that activates cycles, demonic cycles over the lives of people so that certain patterns and events keep repeating themselves. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Call that lady back that lady lift your hands my dear god is not done with you i look at you and i see oppression there is something that the devil has put in you if i don't pray for you very soon they will start telling you you will start feeling pain they will say fibroid in the name of jesus i stretch my hands i command that devil let her go now in the name of jesus christ every cycle over anyone's life are you ready to shout jesus now at the count of three to surprise you what God will do. One, two, get ready. Three. The chain of circles. Be broken. Cycles. Cycles of failure. Cycles of miscarriages. Cycles of unfruitfulness. By the sound of the spirit. Be broken now. Hallelujah. Be broken now. I want to pray. Um, please.
please this man i don't know who the this man yes please quickly we are soon going to pray for the sick i may not have time to prophesy to individuals i'm standing near this lady and i'm seeing a snake this is what i see in the name of jesus i curse that devil i'm not seeing a human being i'm seeing a snake in the name of the lord jesus christ overflow one i'm seeing the power of god this i just mentioned snake and i was seeing serpents just moving at overflow one right now i'm seeing it's like a sword dividing those snakes that's what i'm seeing it's happening to people at overflow one in the name of jesus let it be over now snakes and scorpions the mystery the mystery of snakes and scorpions he said i give you authority over snakes and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy sir i want to pray for you i don't know whether you came here for us you have been but, coming here uh, but i was tra i traveled before that so i have not been coming i want to pray for you yes sir if i don't pray for you the devil is going to kill you i'm looking at you and i'm seeing you inside a coffin they have already closed you i'm not a prophet of doom i want to pray for you you love jesus be careful so that they don't bring these herbal things for you huh? uh, is that true yes, sir. I'm looking at you and i'm seeing them bring something for you to yes. help you yes sir that thing is a charm yes, it's sir. not hap it's charm yes. native yes. doctor yes sir huh? yes, that's sir. what will even kill you yes, sir. it's not going to solve your problem yes, sir. the people doing it are well-meaning yes, but the truth is that they are going to kill you for nothing yes, sir. Yes, sir. thank you sir because you are not even responding to it the way they say you should respond to it yes, and you violate it will destroy you yes, sir. can i pray for you you have you have taken something in your system now that will even destroy you listen let me tell you when you are pressed we are humans and we can be pressed to the wall going to the devil to get a charm is is you are facilitating your destruction if satan gives you tea here he will hold a knife and stab you at the back father by the mercy of god i pray for this man let him not die in the name of jesus i close the gate of the grave over your life in the name of jesus both the herbalist and the conveyor of those charms in the name of jesus we scatter that shrine into pieces in the name of jesus christ i pray for you sir the lord perfects you in jesus name i pray something is leaving this lady oh dear she's vomiting i'm looking at her and i'm seeing something agnes god is not done with that guy or that young man with blue please if you are not agnes don't come here please your name is Agnes. Where are you from? I need to pray for you. I'm seeing an attack on your life. This attack is coming from Calabar. Huh? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, I have to pray for you. Where are you from? Cross River. You are from Cross River? Yes, sir. Come. I must pray for you. Kai, there is somebody, the Lord is setting the person free. I'm seeing a friend going to a herbalist and they are asking the friend to give somebody and they wrote the name of that person. You are here now. In the name that is above all names. I'm serious. Don't think I'm just hyping you. In the name of Jesus, whoever's name has been written, by any demonic friend or whatever herbalist in the name of Jesus because that person you keep seeing dead, dead people you even saw yourself in a coffin in the name of Jesus I curse that spirit now I'm going to pray for you and then we are going to pray for the sick right now ah there is some serious deliverance I'm, I'm seeing something happening in the realm of the spirit this is this is this is a serious
Father, let this lady be free right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come, you, this lady, come. You love Jesus? Huh? Yes, sir. Come. You, I, I'm not condemning you, eh? Look at me. You have to be very serious with God. One, two, friends. Look at me. God has delivered you many times. You would have destroyed yourself. Huh? You're a small girl. You need to love God with all your heart. Please, be very careful so you don't go and put yourself in something that will destroy you i love you eh? i love you and that's why i'm telling you this you need you need somebody to counsel you and follow you up hmm? i'm not going to say everything i'm seeing but you have to be careful because it's god that saved you now i'm seeing something a virus anyway in the name of jesus christ father i pray for your daughter help her by the power of the holy spirit in the name of jesus christ 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 I'm standing and I'm seeing a tree and that tree is this lady and something that was planted and the Lord is saying uproot it I uproot this thing now in the name of Jesus Christ I uproot it now the Spirit of the Lord is taking me to Benway State I've never been there physically but I'm seeing Benway Benway and I'm looking and I'm seeing like a tractor pushing trees down. It's like there is a covenant that has to do with trees. In the name of Jesus Christ, if there is any family involved in this, Sheketos Kotopakariakata, I command and uprooting every tree that has not been planted, help them by my father. Every tree I see Benway State, Shekete Ketakataliakata. In the mighty name of Jesus, let there be an uprooting, an uprooting, an uprooting, an uprooting in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you, my dear. You are a nice lady, but there's bad luck in your life. Very bad luck. And the Lord wants to help you. Father, help your daughter. In the name of Jesus Christ, bad luck be gone now and forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord help you. Come, my dear, let me pray for you. I'm about to pray for the sick now. Our time is gone. In the name of Jesus Christ, there are some. My spirit is heavy to prophesy, but because we have to, I want us to pray for the sick so that i can just make those declarations we may not have time for one-on-one -on -one prophecy but i'm telling you god wants to touch touch a lot of people my dear i want to pray for you in jesus name the lord is rolling away the reproach in your family rolling away the reproach in your family in the name of jesus my dear look at me you are entering a new level of lifting you that's what I'm praying for you for. I'm seeing an angel pouring oil on your head. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you that is a new level of lifting you. This lady looking at me. I prophesy it over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Who is this? Who? Agnes. Agnes. Where is she? Abuja. Abuja, sir. Your sister? Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this lady. Where is she? Abuja, sir. She loves Jesus. Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pray that no man will come into her life and destroy her. Eh? In the name of... Is she married? Huh? In no. the name of... Uh, whatever it is. In the name of Jesus Christ. May God help you. Mama, come. Let me pray for you. It's your season of breakthrough. Come. Is this your child? come boy come i'm looking at this boy and i'm seeing that god is going to use him this is a small boy boy how are you the, the boy doesn't even know but i'm going to pray for him samuel did not know that he would become a great prophet one day when eli he was just an innocent boy i'm going to pray for him mama please stand up i will pray for you look at me ma please don't be embarrassed but the Lord is saying he wants to take suffering from your life. This thing they call in Hausa Wahala. God wants to take it from your life. You are a very sincere woman that loves the Lord. But 
this this cause of hardship um this woman loves the lord with all her heart father you what's what's the name of this boy Reba, huh? lifted okay. your name is lifted yes father i lay hands on lifted in the name of jesus christ use him mightily we are all products of your grace lift him and use him mightily in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ mama i pray for you in the name of jesus christ and i'm telling you this the month of april is your month of strange breakthrough in the name of jesus christ the month of april is your month of breakthrough azuka come lift the camera first let me pray for you and then you keep the camera i want to pray for you because i'm seeing a big project coming for you and this project is going to lift you this is something that has to do with your snapshot but god is bringing someone it's been something you have desired that god will bring someone to open a door and truth you have been faithful you have even been serving in this house but i want to pray for you lord in the name of jesus christ lift him take him to that dimension of grace i release that anointing upon you it will no longer be an ordinary camera i call forth men that will lift you i command it so i decree and declare in the name of jesus christ open doors for you open doors for you in the name of jesus christ come this lady um sarah come there is witchcraft in your family i have to pray for you this thing is affecting everybody in the family everybody everybody not there's no exception everybody lord take away this plague of witchcraft in the name of jesus christ wonderful people beautiful ladies but all kinds of trouble from the pit of hell in the name of jesus christ i silence the voice of the accuser i silence the voice of the accuser i silence the voice of the accuser in the name of jesus christ we are going to pray for the sick now listen i know that there are a number of people who came here sick and a number of you have come trusting god for healing and miracle let me pray for this lady how many of you have your prayer request now lift it up ushers your prayer request those online make sure we collect it this this lady let me have her hands lord jesus let this trap of darkness over this family represented by this lady give way now in the name of jesus christ just hold her gently should be fine submit your prayer request quickly now we are going to pray for the sick don't allow any nonsense remain in your body no matter how small make sure you insist that it leaves make sure you insist that it leaves we are going to be very fast please will be very fast now let me say this when you stand to receive healing don't just stand and be staring as if you are sleeping let your heart be open are we together number two accept whoever is praying for you ask you what is wrong you don't have to say okay it is my ears or my don't worry don't worry the people praying for you have been trained and the anointing of the spirit will touch it doesn't matter what auditorium it's a corporate grace that is working here hallelujah and for all of us who are seated whilst this is happening make sure you are praying because I'm, I'm literally sensing as if I want to throw up. It's the spirit of prophecy. There's, there's something that the Lord is putting in my spirit to release. And that's why I want to pray for the sick quickly. So that we will pray this prophecy. If we do this, I'm satisfied in this service. We have to be very fast so that we'll conserve time. Hallelujah. Jesus. Someone please help with collecting the request. Make sure that even those at the extremes of the road their requests are collected please everybody father in the name of jesus we pray by the ministry of the spirit several people serving as contact points but we pray that your power and your life will touch the sick lord your people have come some of them with incurable diseases some of them with all kinds of devils i decree and declare that your anointing will prevail over every challenge let your people return with testimonies in the mighty name of jesus please be seated while you pray for a while as we pray for these people pray spiritualize yourself make sure that you are submitting your request and make sure you are praying thank you jesus 
my beautifier you have taken away the shame taking away the pain you make my life so beautiful my beautifier you have taken away the shame taking away the pain you make me just like you my beautifier beautifier you have taken away Taking away the pain Taking away the pain Make my life so Make beautiful life so beautiful My beautiful My beautiful You are taking, taking away the shame Taking away the pain Taking away the pain Make me just like you Make me just like you oh,
all in you. All in you, say my trust is in you. Uh -huh. Lay on up to die. My trust is in you. Hey, ancient of days. My trust is in you. Sergeant to the My trust is in you. Oh, I put them all in you.
please make sure make sure everyone's request is here in the name of Jesus February, we look to you again to surprise us. Lord, represented here are the requests of people from several nations of the world and several across this nation. In the name of Jesus, Joshua Selman cannot answer any man's prayer. So Lord, I transfer the trust of your people to you. The one who is able to meet every need and on the strength of the grace that only comes from you and in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God the resurrected lamb the one who is most victorious I prophesy and I turn every request here to become a testimony in the name of Jesus Lord as I walk through these requests in the name of Jesus that is exactly how your people walk through every challenge. Every challenge, every challenge. No matter what it is, I decree and declare that the grace to triumph above it is released. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Listen to me, no matter what it is, no matter what it is, provided it found its way here, in the name of Jesus Christ, the same hand that wrote it is the same hand that receives the testimony. The same hand that wrote it is the same hand that will receive the testimony. There are people who need to lack sleep for these prayers to be answered. May they lack the sleep. There are people who need to be promoted for this prayer to be answered. May they be promoted. There are agents of darkness that must be laid to rest for these prayers to be answered. May they be laid to rest. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. If they are still praying for you in any of the overflows, don't worry. You can just connect with them while I pray for you. By the grace of God, you will not write your request twice. I thought I was done but I just felt drawn again to it whatever it is that you wrote here that requires a creative miracle that means the solution is not currently in existence anywhere may the one who created the heavens and the earth create your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ I want to pray for you as long as God grants me the grace I will never stop prophesying over you it is the greatest thing I think I can do if I give a word of knowledge because I'm limited by time and I'm limited by my own understanding and my level of alignment to God I may not be able to accurately address everyone but when it comes to prophecy everyone can receive are we together now wherever you are you can receive You've heard the testimonies. You've seen the things that happen. The Bible says everyone who speaks, let him speak according to the measure of grace. 
there are some things this anointing can do and let's trust God that it happens in your life let's pray lift your hands father in the name of Jesus Christ I pray that for everyone here who started this year in tears already that from January February you've not known joy I declare that as this week ends that's how your trouble and your sorrow ends too Bible says no weeping endures for a night it says but joy comes with the morning I decree and declare the kind of testimony that will make you get down on your knees and say Lord I've seen you bless me but not this dimension may the God I serve release it to you anyone here jobless or trusting God for a better job in the name of Jesus between now and March miracle service return with your miracle job return with your miracle job return with your miracle job anyone here due for promotion and whether based on tribal sentiments or whatever it is you've been kept at a level in the name of Jesus I open the doors for you rise to a new dimension in the name of Jesus Christ every manifestation of delay in your life others move forward but when it gets to your turn something just clamps you in one position or slow progress slow progress is as destructive as delay I command speed to your life I speak speed to your life I prophesy speed to your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare every advantage that the enemy has over your life in the name of Jesus this is the season where all those doors are closed forever I pray for those in business here I speak over it the grace for multiplication let it come upon your business in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for those who are trusting God to correct certain things in their lives it may be results for students it may be something it may be a mistake of the past you've seen God correct things in strange ways here I command supernatural correction for you for every student here that the result you are holding is not your real result I don't care how long in the name of Jesus the son of the living God we correct it right here anyone here involved in any kind of project building project whatever major project you or your loved ones I decree and declare the finishers anointing comes upon that project in the name of Jesus Christ let me pray over your finances listen let me tell you this the Bible says believe in the Lord your God so shall ye be established he said believe in his prophets so shall you prosper if you truly believe God will surprise you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you I give you two weeks from today in the name of Jesus Christ that between now and the next 14 days let something notable happen to your finances listen I don't want you to think as I'm praying you are thinking oh God will use a B leave whoever God will use to him I'm not talking business in the name of Jesus I say it again between now and the next 14 days may the lifter of men surprise you in your finances hallelujah every gift of the spirit that you had once seen in your life and for some reason 
is either depleting in the grace for dispensing it or not there again i prophesy supernatural activation right now supernatural activation right now the supernatural grace for soul winning drawing people to god a strange grace that will not give you peace until people are coming to jesus through you i release that grace over you i release that grace over you i release that grace over you take that grace now the grace to validate signs and wonders that through your hand listen not just through joshua selman in the name of jesus those hands that are stretched towards me i prophesy to you the unction to walk in strange miracles receive it in the name of jesus the grace to reproduce the miracles in this house i release that grace young and old male or female receive it in the name of jesus i speak over your life that as you utter words concerning the destinies of men you will watch them come to pass with your very eyes in the name of jesus christ whoever needs to make peace with you i decree and declare the grace of god compels them to make peace with you hallelujah whoever has been directed by god to bless you and the devil is stopping them from obeying god is not necessarily financial it may be to bless you with an information access opportunity whoever is supposed to bless and lift you and in the name of jesus the devil wants to stop them i clear the way for your contact with them in the name of jesus anyone here who needs an urgent breakthrough maybe something that has to do with house rent or maybe something that involves the police just something that if god does not intervene the embarrassment is going to be serious i pray that between now and sunday the god that i serve you may not see the wind you may not see the rain but brothers and sisters may my god step in and surprise you We're rounding up whatever has covered the glory of God upon your face so that people cannot see and partake of that grace and also reward you I tread that veil into pieces in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus I pray for any and everyone here suffering from any kind of barrenness in the name of jesus christ by next miracle service you come back pregnant i say it again by next by next month miracle service you return with your baby in your womb in the name of jesus the spirit that makes you see what you want but never hold it is close to you you see it they promise you and say by tomorrow i will do something then in the night something happens in the name of jesus everything your eyes have seen i put it in your hand everything your eyes have seen i put it in your hand hallelujah finally i call your destiny helpers from the north the south the east the west whether they are in this country or outside this country i don't know how god will make them meet you but i declare they must meet you in the name of jesus they will not only meet you they will bless you in the name of jesus they will not only bless you they will continue blessing you I multiply dreams and visions and encounters in your life 
whatever has choked away your prayer life you used to pray for two three four five hours now you pray for 10 15 minutes you are drowsy you are tired it's an attack it is an attack it is the devil you used to be consistent but right now you wake up in the night you pray for 10 minutes you are snoring back in the name of jesus tonight let there be revival upon your prayer life revival over your prayer life the appetite to study the word you once had it but it went away and for some of you you've not read your bible since last friday it's not that you don't want to the grace to make it happen is no longer there i command tonight may that fire for the word come upon you hallelujah for all your loved ones who are connected to you whether they are born again or not because you came here tonight I stretch my hand may the grace and the blessing that came to you may it get to them too in the name of Jesus Christ give Jesus a clap In the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain 